Okay, well, welcome into the Three Guys Talking Ball podcast. It is episode 40, the Pat Tillman episode. It is September 8th, 2022. We got the NFL kicking off first game of the day of the year. Bills Bucks tonight, or Bills Rams, Bills excuse Rams. me. That's going to be kicking off tonight at about 6.30 Mountain Time. I believe the Rams are favored. And... I thought, the Bills a, were two, I thought the Bills were two and a half. Our points. Bills are two and a half. Yes. Yes. Yep. All right. We're starting off hot here. Two, going back to two episodes a week for the first time since I've started this. So a little bit rusty. You got to get the mind right a little bit. And we'll go from there. But and if we'll go through just Grant and I today. Ethan's out. So we're going to go over our NF, NFL predictions. Go cover our, some of our week one games. And then go take it over to college. And then wrap up with curveball of the week. I got to fantasy draft that's set to start so i'll be we'll be updating it as that goes grant says he's got a bold prediction for the nfl season so you're going to want to stay tuned for that for sure and we'll kick it off grant welcome back now we'll we'll start here because you didn't get a chance to defend yourself i don't know if you guys listened to our two ethan and not mine my tuesday episode we we did kind of we did discuss the iowa south dakota state game We'll give you a little bit of a chance to defend yourself here. I I, I can't defend myself. That was <laughs> awful. It was, it was bullshit. Um, I mean, I'm not gonna. Lie. I knew going into the year this the that offense for I would be rough. There's no getting around it. It's just it's kind of who they are. It's you just look at the personnel they had and the the identity that they have as a team and the philosophy they how they want to get that done. You knew it was going to be rough and. You know, when you're already thin at the receiving core, as they historically are, when, you know, when uh, Keegan Johnson's out, Keegan, yeah, Keegan Johnson, excuse me, um, Nico Regani and uh, Gavin Williams, you know, three of your top four players at the skill position set you're going to have. And if you compare those players throughout anywhere in the Big Ten, they're not the greatest by any means, but they're not awful. Um Better than what was, they showed. Better what yeah. they showed Saturday. Uh, is yeah. there a chance for any of them? Are they going to be playing this weekend? Uh, Williams, yes. The two receivers, no. Okay. Um, so, again, it's going to be it's going to be ugly. And um, I don't know if you guys touched this, but the Thursday night game last week with Purdue, with Charlie Jones going out and having you know twelve catches, over one hundred twenty yards and a touchdown. That's also a bad look for Iowa too, because now that we're in the world of the transfer portal and people wanting to play right away, if they don't need to sit out, they're going to go to a school where they have a better opportunity to play and put up numbers um, and, and to benefit their career. So that, you know, that that's also going to hurt Iowa too. And then also this nonsense that they put out on for any potential prospect on the recruiting end is just awful. Um, so I, like I said, I can't defend myself because it, it was, it was terrible. It was embarrassing. It looked like they didn't practice. They got worse from last year, which was, which is saying something, um, so, you know, it, and you can't even worry about, you know, winning big 10 West titles or trying to compete to go to Indy. Now with that offensive showing, I know it's early in the year, but you have to worry, could this team be bowl eligible? Cause this, this defense is going to be good and it's going to carry them. But when your defense outscores your offense, four to three, I don't care how good your defense is in the Big Ten. You're not winning six games. This isn't the 2000 Ravens defense that, <laughs> that Iowa has here. That's, this isn't an all-time defense. Georgia's defense couldn't have won all these games they won last year with this offense. Uh, so, like I said, I can't defend myself, and it's got to get better. And if it doesn't get better, people are going to lose their playing time, and coaches will be fired. Is Are, are the – are the Ferentz duo, is that a, is that a, a tandem? Is that a, uh, if one goes, the other one goes, or? I don't, I don't think so. I, I think Kirk has done a, you know, being the winningest coach in Iowa history and the program he's built with the coaching staff. Um, it's not, hey, if Kirk leaves, Brian leaves, but Kirk might have to have an uncomfortable conversation with his son and say, hey, you know, Brian, you've been with this Iowa program for the last 10 years. 
you started off coaching tight ends in New England in 2010 and came to Iowa. Maybe, you know, being an offensive coordinator, it's just not for you. And it, it hurts this program. Um, so I think if one of them, because Kirk, he's still got, I think, four or five years left on his contract. You, you keep Kirk because you're not going to fire the head coach because of this, but you have to rehaul your offensive staff. Because like I said earlier, if this performance continues and it, their offense looks like this in 2021 and 2022, you're hurting the future of your football team because you're, you're not going to want to have players play in this offense. And to go back to Charlie Jones going to Purdue and balling out, the Purdue Boilermakers put out a stat, their football team, uh, they put a graphic on Twitter the other day that compared Charlie's number from last year to this first game. And he had only had three touchdowns last year in the air. He had one the other night. He had 320 yards last year. He had, what, 150 last week. He only had 23 catches. He had 12 catches last week. It's, it's an absolute eyesore to this Iowa program. And if it continues like this, I mean, you, you have to make a change at offensive coordinator because you're only going to hurt your team. You won't be able to get those necessary players in to compete like what they want to. Yeah. The interesting development. They got a big one, which we'll touch on later in the podcast. But first things first, we're going to discuss, break down, give our predictions for the NFL this year. We're going to go by division by division, break it down, go four to one. Each division, give out our give out our MV, NFL MVP and Super Bowl prediction and winner. And then we'll go discuss our uh, week one opponents matchups. We'll also throw in the Vikings Packers because got a lot of Vikings and Packer fans that listen to this podcast, make sure they're informed. And we have a Vikings fan on the podcast as well, but he's not here today. So we'll, we'll do our best to give our uh, assessment of what we think is going to happen on Sunday. So we'll start in the NFC East and at four, I have the giants. There's just too many question marks. I think Daniel Jones is going to be benched by the middle of the year. I just, I think Brian Dable is a good coach, but I don't think, I think Daniel Jones is beyond repair. I don't think they have any weapons. I don't know what, if Saquon can stay healthy, their offensive line is a mess. And I just don't have enough confidence. I think the only way that I would could see them possibly moving up or making a run is if they decide to go trade for Jimmy G, but it sounds like he's staying put. So I got the giants at four, then at three, I got the Washington now formerly Washington football team, but now the Washington commanders, I have them coming in at three. I think Carson Wentz, this is a do or die year for him. I do think he has a good year. I think he's got the best weapons he's had since he came into the league with ter scary Terry McLaurin. So a good tight end room, some running backs. Uh, also, maybe one of the better coaching staffs. Actually, I don't even know if I can say that because Frank Reich is still a good coach. But we'll see. And I think this is Carson. It's do or die for him. And if he's not, he's going to be a backup for the next 10 years. And then at two, I don't want to do this. But I have my Dallas Cowboys coming in second. Too many question marks. Coaching is awful. Awful. Yep. They're bet. The only hope is if they fire Mike McCarthy in week four and let Dan Quinn take over. I think the defense is going to be spectacular. They're going to be able to get to the quarterback. Hopefully Trayvon Diggs can actually stop somebody like, unlike he has been all, all camp. When well, they're going to get a, they're going to get a good test. week right, right off the bat on Sunday night going up against Tom Brady. And we'll we'll get more into that game, but they Tyron Smith had his hamstring fall off his off the bone. He's out. They did sign Jason Peters, but he's also somebody who can't stay healthy. He's also forty years old, and he's forty years old exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so and they maybe, got older at the position, and they drafted Tyler Smith, and we'll see. It might be some growing pains, and I, I'm. I'm will, I'm almost, I was almost willing to say after I saw the Tyron Smith injury, just let Tyler Smith play. You might go through some growing pains, but I think there is enough talent on that offensive line between the, the right side, Zach Martin. Uh, I can't even think of the guy's name that plays right tackle. Uh, Looney. And then at left 
left guard center, there's still some questions there, but I think Dak it's gonna Dak's gonna have to win MVP for them to win win the division this year. I think there's no other way around it. And then at one, I have the Eagles. I hate doing it. I hate saying it, but they have they have the best roster. They've got a really good coach in Nick Sirianni. I think the biggest thing with the Eagles is is can Jalen Hurts take that next step? Can he be the quarterback that can anticipate guys being open? Can he throw guys open rather than just throwing it to open guys? Because that's going to set him apart from being a good quarterback to a great quarterback. I think that's good enough to win the division. I don't know. I don't have him advancing very far in the playoffs. Probably a first round exit because they're going to play a team like the Vikings or the 49ers, throw the Panthers, Cowboys. Saints even, mm-hmm. I don't it, – it, it, it's a toss-up that last – those last probably 10 spots in the NFC. And I have, I have the Cowboys making the playoffs as the last wild-card team sneaking in. But I don't I – just, there's just no hope for me for this team. And the division, I think it, there's just no excitement. There's nothing that excites me – about this team that I, I can get my hopes up for, get excited for. Yeah, dude, I'm with you. This, this NFC East, it, it's filled with teams who, when they turn their television on in the facility, were in the history channel. I just, like you said, there's no excitement. There's no pizzazz in my eyes. It's, it's one of the more boring divisions in football. Like when we have talking points, no one's talking the NFC East. And if people are, it's Dallas just because of the name, the brand, and what it brings out there. But uh, this division, it, it, it's not, it doesn't have that much excitement for me. Um, but again, you know, four to one, uh, I'm with you. I'm with you on the fourth spot, the the Giants. You know, Dylan, I th- they again might be one of the worst teams in the NFL this year. And your point, you know, um, uh, Brian Dable, there we go. New head coach for the Buffalo Bills. I think he's going to do. I think he's going to do a good job. He's grown so much over these last five years because he was the offensive coordinator when Alabama won that title in seventeen with Jalen Hurts, and even then that offense didn't look too good. Sean McDermott hires him, and what he, the growth he's had these last four years building that Buffalo offense with Josh Allen. So he can do it. You know, he's been around, but he's got an uphill battle. Uh, you know, Kayvon Thibodeau was hurt. Uh, we don't know if he's going to play in week one. Evan Neal, who a player I was really high on going into the draft, has struggled at left tackle. Again, the Giants, they have no skilled players. It's not the question of if, but when, when is Saquon Barkley going to get hurt? I mean, the, the dude's made of glass. I get it. Your quads are huge, but that doesn't matter when you can't play in the league because your best ability is your availability, and Saquon's just not available. Um and then Daniel Jones, it's boom or bust. You got to think this Giants team, unless he can win 10, 11 games this year, they're done with him. Looking at these quarterbacks coming out of college this next year, you're going to have a lot of NFL teams, I think, licking their chops and they're saying, to your, like what you said with Dak, unless he wins an MVP, he's done. Giants at four. I'm with you, you on the commanders at three. You know, I think they got an upgrade over Taylor Heineke with Carson Wentz, um, but – I want to know is, is can their defense get back to being as dominant as it was in 2020? And even then it, it took them till about week eight to really get that thing going. And with Chase Young coming off an ACL tear, he's, he's on the pup list. He's going to miss the first four games. Uh, we just, we don't know what they have there. A secondary that's really not that good that relies on that pass rush. And if Chase Young is out, they just, they can't get there. And then also, what are you going to get from Wentz? We, we don't know with Carson. He's had one great year in 2017 where he's the MVP front runner. And then his 2019 season has slept on when they won the division and he had no receivers, no receivers over 500 yards, but still threw for over 4,000. But besides that, it's just, it's a roller coaster of emotion. Uh, and, and he had a good year in Indy last year. It was just mm-hmm. bad turnovers. It, it was in the, the turnovers. And then when, when it mattered, when they, it was a do or die game. He shit the bed. Yeah. Against Jacksonville and, that last week. Yeah. And, you know, and, and the whole, the whole Colts team did that day too. Um, yep. You could, I remember last year watching hard knocks in season and hindsight is 2020. 
but leading up to that week of practice, you could tell the Colts were off. They just didn't have a good week. I think they thought they were going to go into Jacksonville and shitstorm this team. They were like, we're playing a two and 14 team. They've been done. They fired their head coach. They've already got vacations to Cabo booked in the Dominican in Greece. We're going to beat the fuck out of these guys. Well, no. And they haven't beat Jacksonville since 2014 in Jacksonville. So they got caught there. Um, but that that's that's the Colts. That's a different division. Uh, but then on two and one, I went back and forth all day with this. I couldn't make up my mind. But we're thinking the same. I, there's, there's too many questions with Dallas. Um, and, you know, to your point again, losing Tyron Smith until November, December, he's been hurt all these last five years. Losing Lyle Collins, I think, is a big loss to have on your, your right tackle there. Unfortunately, Michael Gallup is hurt. Amari Cooper is in Cleveland. Um, can Zeke stay healthy? Or is, can he be underway? Is he going to perform? Is Tony Pollard your back? Um, you just you just don't know. And, um, you know, can the defense, can they be as dominant as, as, the, as they were last season? Um, or a team's going to double team, are they going to double team Micah and say, hey, Demarcus Lawrence, you haven't performed since 2018. Beat us. The secondary with Trayvon Diggs, you have 11 interceptions. You give up over 1,000 yards. There's too many question marks for Dallas. I just, I couldn't go with them there at two. And then number one, I'm with you, the Eagles. Um, I like their roster. I liked how their coach is committed to the running game. And he knows we don't have an explosive offense. So they're going to protect their young quarterback. But they also said, hey, screw it. This year, we need a number one. We're going to go out and we're going to get an A.J. Brown type to help our young quarterback. But with that, A.J., he, he's not the fastest guy. He's not going to get open. You're going to have a lot of deep crosses. So to your point, um, uh, you know, and, and that was those, also those 15-yard in routes, Jalen's going to have to get in the ball. And can he? To be determined. But uh, just with that running game and the nice pieces they have in their front seven on that defense with Jordan Davis and Nicobe Dean, I like the Eagles to win the uh, NFC East as well. Yeah, well, and, and the other part, too, is it's going to be the A.J. Smith edition is going to be huge for uh, Devontae Smith. Or A.J. AJ Brown for Devontae Or A.J. Smith. Brown, yeah, because Devontae Smith's a guy that's going to stretch the field, and he's a lot e an easier guy to prepare for when you don't have a guy down low that can get the yards after catch. They got a good tight end in Dallas Goddard, who they extended to. And yep. it, it, it's I wouldn't be shocked if it comes down to the last couple of weeks because I, I don't think anybody in that division is super talented. And if Dallas wins, it's going to be the first time we'll have a repeat winner since like 2000, since the Eagles did it back when Donovan McNabb was quarterback. Oh, geez. And Andy Reid was still there. Yeah. And, and then we'll move over to the AFC East. And my draft has started. Looks like, uh, I don't even know who the first pick is, but. Someone guess, was Jonathan oh, Taylor. It was, it was Jonathan Taylor. Yep. Yep. I'm the fifth pick. So I've got it, got a little bit, bit left, a little time left before I pick. So we'll, we'll transition over to the AFC East. And in at four, I have the Jets, just Zach Wilson injury. They released a bunch of guys at ro the roster cut deadline. And then they were picked up by a bunch of different teams. So either the Jets, draft evaluators are horrible or the other teams are geniuses and see see something the jets don't could be a little bit of both but i i don't i think there's just too many questions with this jets team if zach wilson's able to take the next step i don't know if it's going to be enough their old line with beckton getting hurt i yeah i think it was beckton that got hurt yeah, beckton yep he's out for and the year that's not good for a young quarterback who already had a non-contact knee injury. And I just, I see the Jets picking early again in the, in the 2023 draft at three, I have the dolphins. They made a lot of uh, off season acquisitions. They hired Mike McDaniel, uh, the OC from the, from the 49ers Tua. it's a big do or die year for him. They signed Tyree kill. Ooh, and I am up. Traded for so, Tyler, Tyree kill. Or traded. Yes draft and everything i'm all excited so right now i got austin eckler justin jefferson jamar chase those are the top three that are picked or are available 
Uh, who do I want to go with? I took J- JJ in my first draft. I think I'm going to go with him. Yeah, I was going to say Eckler, he's a, a sneaky popular pick, but just with what Jet can do, he, he, he's a hard guy. He's a hard guy to pass up. Yeah. Cause you know, he's going to go, he's, you know, he's going to go for at least, at least 75 catches, 1300 yards and probably another 10 touchdowns. Yep. I, I went with JJ. So yeah, so that's, that, that's the right play. Yeah. So back, back to the AFC East. And then at two, I have the Patriots. I think, see if Mac Jones is going to take that next step as well. But there, there's just too many questions. You don't know who's calling plays. I don't know who he's going to be throwing to. The O-line is a little bit of a mess. I is think under Ken- Bill Belichick is Kendrick, that – Is Kendrick Bourne also hurt too? Yep, I think so. Ugh. Yeah, and I did. I, the, the only saving grace I ha- that I have is that Bill Belichick still on the sideline. So they're going to – He's going to be – this. people will talk about this as one of his best coaching jobs just because of so many things in question. And then mm-hmm. winning it for the third straight year, I got the Buffalo Bills. Josh Allen, Von Miller, they have gotten an improved pass rush. And – Tredavious White coming off Tredavious an ACL. Tredavious White, Stephon Diggs, uh, see if they commit a little bit more to running the ball. I believe they got a second-round running back. Uh, James Cook. And James Cook, yep, from Georgia. Yep. The, Delvin's little brother yeah also a weapon out of the backfield too so Mm -hmm. he could be a good pairing with Devin Singletary and I I think there's just too much talent too much of a talent gap between this the Bills and Patriots and the reason and even the Dolphins Patriots Dolphins you could flip those too but I went I just went with the Patriots because I think I trust Bill Belichick more than I trust first year head coach Mike McDaniel and how big is that week one game going to be Dolphins Patriots um, with all the, the hype and um, the building of this team, the Dolphins have done going up, going up against a team that they just have historically never been able to beat in these last 20 years. Have, did all that work and roster turnover? Was it for the better or d- did you lose to the Patriots and for coach Belichick and that staff, no offensive play caller, no receivers. Can you start out? On a high note, so that that'll be an interesting game to see on Sunday. Um, you know, at the at the noon window, which there's not many good games at noon, so that that's probably the one to watch. Um, but uh, you know, for the Jets, they're going to be bottom feeders again, um, dude. And I just I remember looking at their schedule by November sixth. I personally think their season's over. This is before their bye week. Listen to this: first game against Baltimore. That's a loss. Yep. Second game, you got to play the Browns. Sure, you still, you know, there's no Deshaun, but the Browns are still one of the better teams in football. You're not winning that game. You got to play the Bengals, play the Steelers. Sure, with a shoddy quarterback, but with that defense in Pittsburgh, they're going to eat up this young quarterback. The Dolphins, Packers after that, the Broncos, Patriots, Bills. That's hey. a, that's just a brutal schedule. It is. And to interrupt you, I, I, I'm on the clock again. But you guys ain't wasting any time. No, I, I like that though. I yes. like it fast. I don't like wasting my entire night drafting, but I can't beat it. I'm podcasting and doing fantasy draft. You can't get much better than that though, can mm-hmm. you? Uh, no, no, you can't. So I got a va- best available right now is Tyree Kill, Travis Kelsey, James Connor, Aaron Jones. Oh, uh, let's see here. You know, I'm thinking. I'm thinking I might go, might go Travis Kelsey. That's that's the dude I was thinking too, because he's gonna be I, Mahomes is gonna lean on him those first couple of weeks. Exactly, and just like Jet, dude, he's gonna have 75, 80 catches this year. Yep, and this and is a PPR league too. There you go, and you know Kelsey Travis finds the end zone. Unlike most of these tight ends in this league, who catch a lot of balls and are good players but don't find the end zone, Travis finds the end zone. You know, yeah. he's, he's going to give you eight touchdowns a year. So I, I, with Jet and Kelsey, I already love your roster. Me too. But back but yeah, to back to the your AFC East prediction. The Jets, they're just they're bottom feeders right now, and and for three, this is this is where we finally differ tonight, folks. I, I think it's the New England Patriots. Um, too many question marks on the offensive side of the ball, and 
Um, Mac Jones, I just, I don't trust him enough to make these players better and help win games for the Patriots. Cause in return, the Patriots, who are, who's, who's rushing the quarterback this year for them? They got rid, they got rid of Chase Winovich. Um, Kyle Van Noy is, is with the Los Angeles chargers. Their linebackers are still some of the slowest linebackers in the league. I don't know who their front seven is. I don't know how they're going to be able to slow people down and get after the quarterback to protect their back end when they also lost JC Jackson and, you know, Malcolm Butler, you know, hasn't been the same these last couple of years, but he's hurt. He's, he's not playing this year. I just, and with Kendrick Bourne being hurt, I don't really trust their pass catchers. I don't know what to say with this, with this Patriots team. Um, I just, I just don't have trust with him. And I understand Belichick. He's a genius. He's the greatest to ever do it. But like he says all the time, your players still have to play. And I just don't think they have the players uh, to compete this year with the Dolphins to get to that second place spot. And with the Dolphins, it's the addition of Tyreek Hill, Jalen Wall coming into his second year, Mike Kosicki, uh, the running back room with Raheem Mostert and um, um, I can't remember their, their other back, but they have, they have some good players and, you know, two of, there is a question mark with him. We don't know what he's got, what he doesn't have. Uh, the GM clearly wanted him. That's why they got rid of Flores because Flores didn't. The new coach comes in and says, Hey, I have an offensive system that can bring out Tua's skills to succeed. But we'll see if Tua doesn't take a step this year, Mike McDaniel might come and say, no, he's not my guy. But just with the weapons that they have on that offense, um, and then an offensive line that's getting better every single year, they're going to be a little more creative in the running game. So I think that's going to give them the slight advantage to finish second this year um, in the AFC East. But winning this division, this might be the easiest division pick in all of football. If you ask me, I think the separation between one and two and three, it's, it's not close. It's, it's the Buffalo bills. Hell, they, they might be the best team in football from top to bottom. Stefan Diggs, Gabriel Davis, Dawson Knox as your pass catchers, uh, an offensive line that needs to get better. But like you said, you draft Delvin cook, they're going to attempt to run the ball a little more. The number one defense in football last season. And like you said, they bring in Von Miller. They looked at that Chiefs game and they said, we couldn't get to Patrick enough. Our defense was tired at the end. We're going to try to bring in an all pro, a Super Bowl MVP, a guy who's um, who's gotten after it for the last 10 years. And I, th I think that's going to help this Bills team. And I think they're going to be on a mission um, for what happened last year. They're going to have that just a bad taste in their mouth. Great coaching staff with Sean McDermott. I think they're just going to have this thing well-oiled, and they're going to be a machine all year. So the Bills win the AFC East easily. Well, and back to the Dolphins, they, they're, they like you were talking about with uh, Mike McDaniel, they're running a very similar system to what he ran in college at Alabama mm -hmm. is what I've, what they talked about when they hired him. And if he's able to take that next step, because he has shown flashes, Correct. And we've been told in practice that when him and when he throws Tyreek the ball, he's it's been a touchdown every play. But I, I, I say that I a little bit sarcastically. I'll but, believe it. I'll believe it when I see it. But we'll see. Biggest thing with him is with Tua is I don't see his arm strength. They they need to stick with the short throws, quick screens, slants, short throws, get him going. Develop. Lean on that run game a little bit too, that zone running scheme with Raheem Mostert that got him to a Super Bowl three years ago. Exactly. If they do that, they're they can easily make it to the playoffs. Oh, yeah. And look also, you know, Tyreek, he's changed the game, of course, with the deep ball. But look what he did against Buffalo in the playoffs. When he, he got that pass, you know, what seven eight yards or two or three yards past the line of scrimmage, and his legs were a difference maker. You know, Mike Daniel, he's going to see that, and he's going to get him in a good spot uh, to make plays with his legs and take a game over. And then also with Mac Jones, with not having any, any weapons around him, I don't think he's good enough to carry a team by himself. And let's be honest, no team, no quarter, hardly any quarterback in the NFL would be able to carry a team with as minimal skill players like this. And when you have 
Matt Patricia or Joe Judge calling your offensive plays. That's just not fair. That's almost cruel. Um, but Belichick, he loves his guys. Um, and, you know, he's going to bring them back. So we'll, we'll see. But I just, I just don't trust Mac Jones because he doesn't have that skill set to carry a team um, with as minimal weapons as he does. Yeah. And we'll move over to the NFC North here. Our local division, Grand out in Mankato today. I'm still in Dickinson. And at four, bringing the caboose for the NFC North is the Bears. The Bears. They have nobody to protect Justin Fields. Justin Fields might be a good quarterback, but he's got nobody to protect him. Outside of David Montgomery, he has no weapons. And new coach, I think there's just too many question marks. They got rid of, they traded Khalil Mack. They don't have any draft capital either, so they weren't able to draft. And I, there's just no hope that with this Bears team. And then at three, a team that I, I think everybody after watching Hard Knocks is going to be rooting for is the Detroit Lions. Mm-hmm. Second year under MCDC, Motor City, Dan Campbell. They... They've got some nice pieces. You know that every game, they're going to be in every game because they're going to play their ass off. They're going to play hard. They're going to fly around. They're going to be in it. See, they were in a lot of games last year too. Yep. We'll see if they're able to take that next step, convert a couple of those to wins. Their schedule sets up okay where they could they could be in the playoff hunt late in the season. I don't know if they're able to. I think it sounds like they are very high on Jared Goff in that in the Detroit locker room. I think if they can keep it a play action game and run the ball effectively with Jamal Williams and DeAndre Swift, I I I would there there's no reason they can't be be a playoff team or on the border. I think they're gonna play complimentary football. They're gonna try to keep their defense off the field and try to they took a big uh got the number two draft pick Aiden Hutchinson trying to bolster that and they have a bunch of guys that just are grinders. They love they love the process of football. And that's going to eventually convert the wins. I think there is some questions about Dan Campbell's game management. If he's able to get that figured out, we'll, we'll, we'll let the chips fall where they may. And then at two, I got the Minnesota Vikings. I'm not ready to put them at one yet. I think Cousins has been a very good quarterback for them. They've got a new coach in Kevin O'Connell. We'll see. The defense is still a big question mark. We'll see if they can if they can stay healthy, which they haven't been able to do these last three, four years. Oh, and I'm on the clock. I better draft Brees Hall there. Okay, so I got Brees Hall. I have Brees Hall, Justin Jefferson, Mike Evans, and Travis Kelsey right now. It's a good squad. Yep. And uh, back to... Back to the Vikings. If Daniil Hunter can stay healthy, Kendrick stays healthy. Zadarius Smith. Zadarius Smith stay healthy. And who outside of Patrick Peterson is going to be that second step up and be the second corner for the Vikings? Because right now, I don't know who it is. I think Booth, their second round pick is, I don't, is, he got hurt in the preseason. I don't know if he's going to be. Yeah, he rolled up his ankle against the Niners. Um, it's not season ending or threatening like that. I think it was just, I think it was a sprain. Uh, but I think as of right now, it's Cam Dantzler's spots. Okay. Uh, um, but yeah, so that, you know, we'll, we'll see, we'll see where that goes. Their, their special teams, I three legged Greg, he hit, kicked a couple of game winners for him. And I, I, I did like this Vikings team. I do. There's, there's definitely reasons for optimism. I'm going to see him in person October 31st against the Cardinals. And then at one, it's for the, it would be the fourth straight, fourth. going for a fourth straight year, fourth, Green yeah. Bay Packers. As long as 12 is under center, I it's hard for anybody, me especially, to go against them. I know they've got some questions. They've got some receivers to place, but they have a good running game in Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon, a good Thunder and lightning combo. The defense has some question marks after losing Zadarius Smith. There's always questions in the secondary. And I don't have a lot of confidence in Matt LaFleur. 
I think Aaron Rodgers covers up a lot of his deficiencies, but I think that Aaron, Aaron Rodgers is going to be in the hunt for his third straight MVP. I like the Packers to come out of the North. Yeah, you know, with with the Bears, it's it's kind of almost just embarrassing how bad and how far this organization has fallen. Um, when what is it, Darnell Moody? When he's your um, number one receiver, you're who got you're ejected drunk. from the game. <laughs> Just yes, punching for, the dude for, for punching the Saints player. So to your point, you now like I said, the Bears they have no put anyone to protect the quarterback, and they have no skilled players for your receiver, your quarterback to get the ball into his receiver's hands, uh, which is an awful, awful combination. Your best defensive player doesn't want to be there anymore. Uh, you lose also lose Hakeem next to the Bucks. Uh, you lose, you know, you know, Khalil Mack is gone. They, you know, still have Robert Quinn, uh, but you know, was last year kind of a unicorn year for him, where he didn't get hurt. We 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 just don't know. A lot of answers there in Chicago. A lot all, of questions. All, you mean? A lot. Yeah. Excuse me. A lot of questions. <laughs> a lot of um, answers that will not be answered um, this year, and also first year head coach Matt Eberflus. Uh, it's just it's a tough thing to take on. The Bears know they're going to have a soft rebuild or just a rebuild, so they're going to be basement um, in the basement again um, this year. And then also, I'm with you on the lines. They're they're going to be a better team, um, you know, this year. They're going to compete their tail off, and they're going to win some games. But the big question you have with them is um, one that's a lot of pressure on Aiden Hutchinson to come in as the number two overall pick and try to be that pass rush. Uh, you know, for this, for this Lions team, because, you know, besides that, they really don't have too many horses up front. Um, you know, their line, linebacking core, if you watched hard knocks, hard knocks, Malcolm Rodriguez, or as I call him Rodrigo from Oklahoma state, he was, he was a, um, a bottle of lightning and came in like a hurricane. And he, he was, was their number, number two requested Jersey. Yes. Behind Hutchinson. Yep. How cool, how cool was that? It, well, and Dan Campbell said it. It's like that just shows mm -hmm. that what he's trying to get for this Detroit team, it, the message is going through. Correct. Um, you know, those those are some two nice, good players. But besides that, their secondary still has a lot of question marks. Um, the first rounder from Ohio State, you know, a couple of years ago. Alcuda. Alcuda. Um, he was he stayed he healthy. Been, can he stay healthy? He had a bad rookie year. I don't think him and Patricia um, vibed much at all. Um, really, no safeties. Your other corner, you just don't know. So I think that that's still a work in progress in Detroit. But like what Dan Campbell's been preaching, grit, grit, grit. That's what this team has. And it was kind of cool to see on their roster cuts when if they came down to their running back room, there was one player who he was lightning the bottle and he was – he was making the big plays, but they didn't feel like he didn't love football and wasn't consistent enough compared to, you know, Craig Reynolds, who was just a grinder. He wasn't great at any one thing, but he did a lot of good things and he just loves football. The Lions went with the football player. And, you know, like you said, Dylan, that's what this roster needs. It's going to take another year or maybe two, I think, to um, through drafting and maybe even trying to sign a free agent bringing in a guy who's been in this league for four or five years who can be, be a leader on this locker room. But the, the Lions are going to be better, and they're easily going to win a game in December, January this year, that knocks the team out of the playoffs. And people are going to be pissed because they're like, that loss against the Lions costed us our season. So that yeah. will happen. And how can you not root for Dan Campbell? He's a player's guy. He's a football guy. He loves his players. It was cool to see him and get to know him through hard knocks. Yeah, you know this year. And uh, to inter sorry to interrupt you, but I am up again, and the guy I wanted, Elijah Mitchell, was taken right before me. Mondek Chalupa Batman, damn you! And I got right now best available: Jalen Waddle, Brandon Cooks, Marquise Brown. I'm almost tempted to go quarterback here, or take Darren Waller. I got Clyde edwards alaire and Devin Singletary. Also there is my top running backs. Do I take a quarterback here? The best ones right now are Herbert and Lamar. And uh, I part of me wants to take Lamar because I know I'm going to get rushing yards out of him. I don't know, dude. I, I almost roll with Herbert. 
I, I feel like there's a chance he could have 40 touchdowns this year in like a combined 5,000 yards. All right, five seconds. Lock it in. Herbert? I'd go Herbert. Yep, lock it in with Herbert. Done. Done. Got it. Herbert. Championship. Championship, baby. She's a bull. She is. She, she back, come to it. back to the NFC North. Um, and then right here, this this is again is where we differ. I think the Green Bay Packers are going to be second in this division this year. Ooh. Um, is it a risky pick? Yes. Is it a little bull? Yes. But that's not my bold prediction. Um, I I I just I can't. Um, get over how much I think this loss of Devontae Adams is going to mean to Aaron Rodgers. And again, Aaron, he is a superstar. He is a freak. He is he probably the most talented quarterback of our generation. Tom is, you know, the most decorated. But when you can see what Aaron can do on the football field, it's he's he's truly a unicorn. But we saw last year in that playoff game against the Niners, Alan Lazard was open 15 yards down the field, cutting he's across. He's still running if he hits him. He's still running. He catches that ball, and it's a touchdown. But either Aaron doesn't didn't trust Lazard, or he just wanted to go to Devontae. You know, he throws it up into triple coverage, and the rest is history. And with Christian Watson, I, I, I believe he's not even practicing yet. He's questionable. He Aaron Rodgers said he was going to play. Okay. But right now he is questionable. He hasn't. He's barely gone full pads, I know, in practice. Yeah, so, so far. you know, that's your first receiver there. Randall Cobb, it's not a matter of if, but when, when is he going to get hurt again? You know, he's going to ha- he's going to have a groin injury. He's going to have a calf strain. He's going to miss he's going to miss those games. Alan Lazard is an OK player, but he's not a one. Um, you know, and then also big one, David Bakhtiari coming back from, from torn ACL. He didn't play it all last year. Um, he is probably the reason why the Packers didn't play in the Super Bowl in the 2020 season because the Bucs got so much pressure on Aaron because Dave Bakhtiari was out. How is he going to come back? How is his how mentally how's his game going to be? Because when you're 300 plus pounds, you know, coming off an ACL, that's a lot to think about. Um, so that's that's going to be something interesting to see. And then also Robert Tanyan, his second year coming off an ACL tear. Um, how can he rebuild from that? So I just I think there's some question marks. And again, I'm with you. I don't trust Matt LaFleur. I think if it wasn't for Aaron, he would he wouldn't be a head coach or he would be on the hot seat getting ready to lose his job. And then just the punting game and the special teams for Green Bay has been an absolute disaster. We'll see if they can fix that. Um, and then here, here with the Vikings at one, am I taking a risk? Absolutely. Do they need everything to go their way in terms of them to stay healthy? They do. But if Zadarius can stay healthy, if Daniil can stay healthy, you know, Dalvin stays on the field and Thielen doesn't miss games, the energy and the youthfulness that Kevin O'Connell is bringing to this team, I think is going to be, is going to be much needed. And it's going to help propel them to finish these games that they couldn't finish off, you know, last, last season. Um, and like you said, this Vikings team, it's a good roster and there's a lot to like. And I think, you know, it's just kind of, kind of like McVay's first season with the Rams in 2017 there. He's just going to come in. He's going to be full of energy. It's going to be a good change that they needed going from a rigid old defensive head coach. He's going to get more out of his quarterback that he needs this year. And uh, I think it's just going to be a change for good. You know, and the Vikings, are gonna, they're going to come out ahead um, in the NFC North. But again, that could change real quick because if Daniil's out or is it Zedarius, they can't they can't go then they can't cover up those holes in that secondary, but we're the mirror positivity here. And I'm going to say they are. And, uh, you know, I think the Vikings will have a sneaky good year and, you know, could be around that 11 and six mark, which I think is enough to win the division this year. Yeah. Well, and and, and the thing with the Vikings too, is, is this year, it seems like there, there, there's more buzz. There's more energy. There's a little bit more pep in the step because as, as critical of the Zimmer firing as I was, it seems like the message just wasn't getting through anymore. He, he was too rigid where he Mm -hmm. refused to change and you have to be able to adapt to your players. I think you still have to have your core principles, but you still have to be able to open up and find a way to build a connection with your team. And he just didn't want to do that. Even like guys like 
staples of the Vikings defense, Hunter Kendricks, were getting tired of his shtick. So mm-hmm. I think that's going to be huge. And, and also the quarterback and head coach are actually going to be getting along this year. Yep, exactly. They'll have that relationship. And, you know, Dylan, to your point, kind of almost to tie this back into Iowa, a team can have its identity on how you want to play, um, what you believe the right philosophy should be. Um, do you want to be physical, dominant, blitz heavy defense, the identity of how you want to run your organization. But then the philosophy part is where I think Zimmer and this current Iowa administration is at. They still think it's 25 years ago. You know, like you said, you either have, you adapt or die. And Zimmer can have his core principles and run things the way he wants to. But at the end of the day, if you're not doing it the right way, you're not going to get your point across. And for better or for worse, today's athlete, if they don't like things, they're going to voice their opinions and they're going to cause some feathers to be ruffled in that locker room. And then you're going to go. And it'll also be interesting this year to see what the Vikings do because every change they made bringing in, bringing in Questy and Kevin O'Connell, they pretty much said this, this roster was not the problem last year. It was the head coach. They're all in on these players. They're all in on a, a, a new culture and a physiological change for this offense and defense. And we'll see if it works out for them. If, and if it doesn't, maybe it was the players and Zimmer wasn't wrong. Zimmer was right on Kellen Mond so far. Last year, week 18, I've seen him every day in practice. I don't need to see him play. People in media in Minnesota up here, oh, this guy's an asshole. Let the young kid play, blah, 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 blah. Well, hmm, he's in the second the year in the league, and he's on his second team. So Zimmer was right there. So as the season goes out, we'll see if he was right on the rest of the roster or not. Yes, indeed. And that was a, that was a good ending because I am up again. I've got right now, I've got Herbert, Brees Hall, Justin Jefferson, Mike Evans, Travis Kelsey. So I still need a second running back and a flex. I don't know. I think right don't now. Don't you have Clyde Edwards Hilaire? I do not, no. Oh, that was, was an option. He was available, yes. Not anymore, yes. but right now I just see more value at the receiver position. Receivers win you games in fantasy now. This yeah. I got Dar- Darnell Mooney, Gabe Davis, Amari Cooper, Michael Thomas. And Christian Kirk, Hunter Renfro. Ooh. I think at my flat, I think I, I got to go with MT, Michael Thomas. I think so. I think, I think he's going to have a big year. He didn't play at all last year. He's going to be refreshed. Mm-hmm. Good. Give Jam- famous Jameis a target to throw to. I, I'm going with, I'd go with Michael, Michael Thomas. Thomas. Yeah. I think there's going to be some good running backs at the bottom here. And like you said, it's a PPR league. And all Thomas is going to do is catch passes. Lance, he's not going to score touchdowns. Slant. He's not going to score touchdowns. Nope. But he's going to get you catches. He's going to get your balls. Yeah. And with uh, – shoot, I should I should have taken a guy from the AFC North because that's what we're going to talk about next. Would have been a would have been a phenomenal segue. But we, regardless of how we segued, we're, we're there. We're at the AFC North. And the bottom dwellers – for the AFC North is a team that has been there quite often since they've returned or they've been restarted. And that is the Cleveland Browns. They made a lot of moves traded for Deshaun Watson. He's out 11 games. Jacoby Brissett's a nice player. They've got some nice weapons around them, but I think there's just too many distractions around this team. I, I, and that the teams in the division, I think there's, too many good coaches and there's too many good there's two other quarterbacks that I would take for sure over them and then at three and also I think Kevin Stefanski is a good coach and it's a little bit where it's very unbalanced where you got a really good coach below average QB and then an above average QB and a below average coach but at three, I got the Steelers. I just can't bet against Mike Tomlin. The guy's been the head coach for I don't even know how many years now. Never had this a losing season. I think this is his 16th season. Yep. Guys just love playing for him. He has has a new quarterback. There's a new sheriff in town. It is Mitch Trubisky for now. I would expect Kenny Pickett to take over week Week six, week seven, 
we'll say somewhere around there. And but they've got they've got great weapons. They always seem to. They got a really good running back in Najee Harris. Mm-hmm. I think Matt Canada is going to be is going to be work well with either Trubisky or Kenny Pickett, both mobile quarterbacks, something they haven't had for the last 14, 15 years with Big Ben under center. I think he's going to really enjoy u- utilizing their legs. And I think, I think this might be the best version of Mitch Trubisky we'll see because he played for the Bears and that's where quarterbacks go to die. Mm-hmm. And then at two, I've got the Super Bowl runner-up, the Cincinnati Bengals. I think right away, I think their line is going to struggle. There's a lot of new pieces. I think they did a lot to improve it, but I think getting that continuity of the gel, they still got good receivers. T. Higgins, Jamar Chase, tight end as well. I believe I'm trying to I can't even think of who their tight end is now. Um because what's his name went to um the Jets this offseason. Yep. Um, well, good thing I'm doing a fantasy draft. Well, oh, they just signed Hayden Hurts first. Oh, there we go. Yep. There we go. So also that's a, a good addition, good replacement. And then uh, they have Joe Burrow at quarterback. That yet I've one thing I've I think we're quickly learning in this league is is Joe Burrow is a guy you don't bet against. The guy mm-hmm. people portray him as cocky. I I think he's got confidence. He has moxie. There's a difference because Joe Joe just seems authentic. Like he's he's just Joe. <laughs> I don't know how else you say it. Joe Cool. Mm-hmm. You know the the big. The big uh, fur coat, the sunglasses, the chains. The cigar smoking in the locker the cigar room. Cigar smoking in the locker room. Yep. And guys love him. And I'm up again. We'll see here. I think I go defense here in the uh, seventh round. Not really, but I got Amari Cooper. I think I'm going to go with Hunter Renfro. That's a good the choice. Guy again, who's P- always open. PPR league. Yep. Yep, they call him 7 Eleven because he's always open. And uh back to the back to the Bengals. I just I just don't trust Zach Taylor. I think Joe Burrow hides a lot of his coaching flaws. I don't think he's a good coach. I think he's more of the gym teacher type. Mm-hmm. And I it's just we'll see if the Browns have a Super Bowl hangover. Or Bengals, excuse me, have a Super Bowl hangover. I I just I don't know how Zach Taylor is going to get them ready for the year. I think Joe, Joe Burrow is going to cover up a lot of Zach Taylor's flaws. And then winning the AFC, back on top of the AFC North is the Ravens, who are going to are an all-time regular season team. They had a bunch of injuries last year. I don't think that foresee that happening again this year. Lamar Jackson's playing for a contract. And as we record this, he told them today, per Adam Schefter, that – they have till Friday to get a new deal done, which I don't see happening because he his mom is his agent. No, I he's think his, he's his own agent. I th- I thought it was his mom. I'm pretty no, sure it was he, his mom. He's been doing um, the negotiating with the Ravens general manager um, through through the, through this process. Okay, uh, I heard that today via Peter Schrager. Ah, on, on on Good Morning Football there, and Peter he never misses on no. his reports like this. Um, so yeah, he's his own agent. Okay. And so there's that, but the Ravens are going to be one of those teams. They, they, they've covered in, I don't know how many straight preseason games. They are just a really good regular season team. Can Lamar Jackson take the next step? They lose Hollywood Brown, but they return Rashad Bateman. See if he, in his second year can take the next step. They got Mark Andrews at tight end, and they're going to lean heavily on that run, their that running back room. J.K. Dobbins is back. George Edwards is back. And that defense is going to get stops. They're going to make teams kick kick field goals in the red zone. They, they might – teams – I would expect teams to move the ball on that defense, but when it comes to the red zone, they're going to – they seem to always play a little bit more comfortable down there. They're flying around. They get a little more juice, and mm-hmm. that's the making of a good team. So I like the Ravens to come out of the AFC North and represent the North. And, uh, you know, once again, 
we agree on the uh, team who's going to be hanging out in the basement this year. Wow. The little, the little kids at the thing. That's four for four, ain't it? We're, we're, we're halfway through these predictions and we are four for four. What the, do we have? Uh, one, one different or two different? Two different. Yep. Yeah. Uh, but the people at the kitty table for Thanksgiving will be the Cleveland Browns. Uh, again, this year, it's too much turmoil at the quarterback position. Jacoby Brissett is a nice option if you need him for two to three games, but not for an 11 game season. And with Amari Cooper getting a little, a little older, um, he's not quite as fast and as physical as he once was. When he is your number one, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna put my corner right up in him. I'm gonna slow him down. I'm gonna make him beat press coverage, which I don't think he can do. And then in return, Jacoby's gonna have to put balls in the perfect spot, and I just don't think he can do that either. Just too much noise around Deshaun. For this for this Cleveland team to overcome, and it's kind of a shame because I feel like Stephen, Kevin Stefanski is one of the better coaches in this league, which is crazy if you go power rankings. He's third in this division, but anytime you're with a Harbaugh and a Tomlin, it's it's not fair. Yeah. <laughs> um, and but you know, last year Kevin any was coaches in back, Cleveland, any coaches in Cleveland, you know, for, last year Kevin was held back by Baker trying to play through injury. This year the GM went out and got a quarterback. Um, going through all the issues that he's going through, it's it's going to be too much for Cleveland, and they won't won't be able to do it. And then you know, in third place, it's the uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Um, and you know, people coming into the year, they're like, "Oh, this is the first year without Big Ben. How are the Steelers going to do it? All this new um, turnover, young receivers, young offensive skill players. Man, they've been doing this since 2019 when Big Ben um, tore that ligament in his elbow." Mason Rudolph and all those other cats that year, they had a winning record. They almost made the playoffs, won the division in 2020. They were a playoff team last year. You draft George Pickens from Georgia. You have Deontay Johnson, Najee Harris, uh, Friar Muth um, as your tight end. That's a good set of skill players this young Steelers team can have. And guess what? The Steelers folks, they're going to have 50 sacks again this year. They're going to be the best team at hunting your other quarterback. And what do I always Say, Dylan, you have to protect your quarterback and you have to attack the other team's quarterback. Nobody attacks the other team's quarterback the way the Steelers do. That's going to win them two or three games that they shouldn't win this year. But this is still a tough division. And this is, they're going to be in third place again. But again, this is here. This is where we differ. I like the Baltimore Ravens to finish second. Ooh. And it all comes down to kind of like what I said with the Patriots. Who are the skilled players? Can we trust them? You know, people will say, oh, Rashad Bateman, he, he played better last year when, when um, Huntley was the quarterback and, and, Jamar, and Lamar wasn't playing. That's true, but also it's not fair because people forget Rashad missed the first six game with a groin injury last season. So him and, him, and, him and Lamar never had that shot to gel and build that cohesion together that they truly need. But with that, I still, it, may, it might take some time. And outside of Rashad, Rashad, who at the receiver position is going to get open and create big plays. Mark Andrews, top three tight end in this league. He's going to do his thing. But you still need you still need someone else on that offense. And I don't think they're going to be as explosive enough. With that being said, they're still a playoff team. This is still a team come December, come January. You don't want to see them because it's going to get cold outside. They're going to hit you. You're going to feel their pain a little bit. You're going to be bruised, battered, uncomfortable. This is the Ravens team you don't want to see, um, like I said, come January and December. And then winning it, I like the Bengals. And your point, yes, the offensive line, they are going to have to come together a little bit throughout the year. But look what this team did last year with these offensive skilled players. And then look what they're going to be able to do after week six. Once this offensive line, if there are no injuries, which we hope there isn't any, if they can come together, to keep Joe upright in these skilled players they have. And, you know, the Bengals, you know, low key, they, they got a nice defensive line with Trey Henderson, Sam Hubbard, um, and DJ reader. They're going to be able to continue to get after the other opposing team's quarterback. And then they improve their secondary, you know, Daxton Hill, you know, as a first round pick, I like this Bengals team to win, win the North and continue with that mojo they had towards the end of, end of last season. Yeah, and, and back to your point with the Steelers is 
I think it's going to be opposite of what I said the Ravens defense does make teams tick. I think their offense, I think it's going to be – they're going to move the ball from 20 to 20. I think from them for them to move from 3 to 2 or 3 to 1, make that jump, they have to find a way to get touchdowns in the red zone because mm-hmm. with Trubisky, that was his biggest knock. That cost them a, as much as the double doink did. His inability to get the ball in the end zone – in that playoff game against Philly in 2018, that more so cost them the game than Cody Parkey did. If they're, I and I just I think that's why I have the Steelers at three. I think that's why you have them too. I just don't mm-hmm. think they have enough firepower. I don't think they have enough talent at that quarterback position to get get six instead of three. I think they're going to be kicking a lot of field goals. I think Chris Boswell is going to leg is going to earn him a lot of money this year. And if you're if we're projecting into the future, the 2023, 2024 season, if Kenny Pickett can develop and be the guy that the Steelers think he is, and if the Steelers can get a third receiver or a second tight end, you get Chase Claypool the hell out of there and maybe get a second tight end. The way we're looking at the AFC North, we can be looking at the AFC, just like how we are the AFC West. There's three teams, maybe four teams, when Sean comes back, who could win this thing? So the Steelers are going to be a fun team to watch year two, a year, two, and three years from now. Oh, yeah, for sure. It's going to be – it might be the second-best division in the NFL this year behind the AFC West, I think. I think it's – as that far as talent goes, goes I think it has something to say about that too. Yes. Yes. And, but I think right now, I think you're when you look at it, I think AFC West 1 and AFC mm-hmm. North 2, I think yeah. it would – for a for sure be two if Deshaun Watson was playing a oh, full sure. season for the Browns, but for sure. he's not. We're not going to discuss that today. <laughs> but we'll move down to the NFC South. And at four, we're going to go down to the ATL. Nicest stadium in the division, but going to be the worst team. Marcus Mariota, the Falcons cut ways with Matt Ryan this year. Marcus Mariota is going to be the starter to start the year. They did draft Desmond Ritter out of Cincinnati, so I wouldn't be shocked if he's going to be the starter by the end of the year, see if he is the future in Atlanta. But there's too many questions. I don't even know who Marcus Mariota is going to throw to. Calvin Ridley's out. Kyle Pitts is a nice play, but he had, and, and this stat blew me away, he had one touchdown. One. And it was in London. Last year. In London. He has, to, he has yet to score a touchdown in America in the NFL. And Drake London, they drafted in their with their first round selection, and he is the best available in my current fantasy draft. But I'm not up yet, so maybe we'll take him. I doubt it, but uh, <laughs> I think that I don't trust the defense. I don't even know if I could name a single player on that defense. AJ Terrell, why, AJ, AJ Terrell. Terrell. Okay, and then yep. I still think is it, um what's his name from LSU. Son of a bitch. Uh, former line, but I'll have I'll have to look it up. Um, but he he he's a nice line, he's a nice linebacker for him. But yeah, to your point, not a whole lot and on then, that on that Atlanta team. Yep. And then at three Deion Jones. Deion, Deion Jones. Okay, yep. Yep. And then at three, I have the New Orleans Saints. They're going Jameis Winston coming off an of injury, Michael Thomas returning from injury. Alvin Kamara, we we don't know if he's going to play yet. They haven't really said if he's suspended or not. It sounds like he, as far as of now as we record this, he's he's on pace to play. He has not been suspended yet, which baffles me. And I don't know if I trust. I think the defense is going to be good. I just I can't try. I, I just can't trust Jameis Winston. I, that's why I have them at three. I have the Panthers at two. Traded for Baker Mayfield. Can Christian McCaffrey stay healthy? They've got some nice pieces. DJ Moore. That defense is stout. I think they're going to be. They're going to be the leaders in the group, leader of that team. Matt Rule, big year for Matt Rule. If he's not, if he ain't the answer, he's going to be coaching college somewhere. I think Baker Mayfield. I think he's taken the reins of this team. He's established himself as the leader. I think guys rally around him. I think. He's sound. He's he's a great teammate, and I like the Panthers to take second. 
and to win the division is is as about as easy as it gets. Tom, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Tom Brady's back. They have some questions on the line. They have uh, they got to replace Gronk. They signed Kyle Rudolph. Cameron Brait are also returning. Mark uh, Chris Godwin. It sounds like he is going to be playing on Monday or on Sunday night against the Cowboys. <laughs> Mike Evans is back. Julio Jones is playing. Scotty Miller, also a guy that Tom Brady trusts, Leonard Fournette. After Leonard Fournette, I have some questions about the running back room, but number 12 still slinging the rock behind there, whose arm at 45 years old is as strong as ever. Defense, they did lose in Donakin Sue, but I think there is enough there. I think Todd Bowles is one of the best defensive minds, if not the best defensive mind in the NFL as the head coach. I think that's going to be enough in a weaker division in the NFC South. I think that gets, I think the Bucks are able to come out on top. Yeah, dude, this, I think um, it's really just kind of embarrassing when I look at Atlanta and I look at this defense, it's like, wh- where are the NFL players? Where are the NFL starters on this defense? Like these guys are all backups. Like last year, you know how many sacks this Atlanta Falcons team had last year? Eight team as a team that's like a little more than one a game that's a little more than one a game i mean jj watt had more than them for sure uh miles garrett might have been the only other player who i know who's around that 18 19 mark but that's just awful and then you have no pass rush this year and then with your first pick you take drake london you i i I get you you have no receivers but how is that going to change games? I just, I don't understand what this Atlanta Falcons regime is doing. I know they won 10 games, seven games last year. They lost 10, which baffles me. I don't know how they did that, but um, Matt Ryan is not there anymore. Marcus Mariota, he, he's not the guy. Um, he still has no one to throw to. So I just, you know, Arthur Smith is a good coach and they're going to score some points this year, but they still got a ways to go to re- rebuild this team. So, again, I'm with you on the Falcons on um, sitting there in last place. And uh, for third place. And, well, I'll stop you here because what's crazy is when we first started this podcast, if people want to go back and listen to it, after Tom Brady retired, we were talking about his Atlanta being the best team in this division as the favorites. And, Matt and Ryan, boy, has that fallen off. They have the best quarterback. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's unbelievable um, how, how times can change. Just so quick like that. And speaking of things changing, um, this next team I had in third place, a couple months back, I said they'd be four and 13 and their head coach would be fired in uh, November, being the Carolina Panthers. I think they're going to be a little better than four and 13. I had some time to think about it. To your point with Baker coming in, um, his attitude, his bravado, and um, not arrogance, but just, how he carries himself. I think that's what this team needs because Sam Darnold is about as exciting as, as a Brown paper sack. There's just, (laughs) there's just, there's there's no juice to this guy. Um, And then you draft the offensive tackle from North Carolina state to, to help keep Baker upright. Uh, You know, Brian Burns in that defense, um, you know, a top 10, top 10 unit last year. And I think they may have actually been second in scoring or second in yards last year. Um, so that, you know, that Carolina defense is kind of slept on, but I think for me, the question mark is, can Christian stay healthy? And, you know, besides DJ Moore, can Robbie Anderson and some of these other skilled players put it together and be enough for Baker? Cause when Baker was the guy in Cleveland and they had that good year, that was because of the strong running game and Baker was able to grow off that with the play action pass game. But, if Christian can't stay healthy, not sure. Not sure. I trust his team. I uh, was above Chubbard. Um, you know, he's he's the backup from Oklahoma State in his second year, but he he's just not McCaffrey. So that's why I got the Panthers at number two, and I like the Saints uh, three Panthers at three. Excuse me. I like the Saints team at number two. They have one of the more underrated defenses in the NFL, and defensive line that can get after the quarterback. And you know, Jameis was good last year. I understand he's coming off the ACL tear and no more Sean Payton, 
But when you have Michael Thomas back from injury, Chris Olive, Camara, uh, you signed Jarvis Landry. It sucks that they lost Penning, you know, their first rounder from uh, from Northern Iowa in the offensive line there, because you also lose Teron Armstead to um, the Miami Dolphins. So that, that's a bummer. But well, I think you, the- I, I they, there was some good news on Penning because it sounds like it wasn't. It's not going to be as serious, okay, as as initially thought. They do expect him back at the at some point this year. I believe in the middle of the year, early November. Oh, that's good. Yeah, you just you always hate when people get hurt in training camp. These injuries, it just really puts a damper on a team. But uh, again, just kind of the and I think Dennis Allen, he's going to learn from his mistakes he made in Oakland, second time, second time being a head coach. And something about this Saints team, how they give the Bucks trouble. Uh, they just they play the right way. They know have to get. They know how to get after. It. I think they're going to make this Bucks. This Bucks team earned this division title, but the Bucs are still going to win it. Um, but what scares me is losing the three interior offensive line. Jensen, the injury, Marpet retiring, and uh, with Kappa to Cincinnati. Because when Tom's been vulnerable in his career, it's been that pressure right up the middle. And, you know, you had a Bucs offensive line last year who had what, two starting, one starting combination weeks, one through 17. And in the playoffs, there's a wrench thrown into that when Tristan sprains his ankle against the Eagles and then just losing some other players in the middle there when they didn't have that cohesion that took them down. So I, I think the Bucs are going to have to work through that. And then one thing I didn't understand about this defense last year is, is there was no pass rush. Um, Jason Pierre-Paul, Shaq Barrett was a nice player, but they couldn't get after it the way they did when they won that Super Bowl. So that that needs to get better. And if and this also their secondary last year was obliterated by injuries. So they'll be coming back. They'll be healthy this year. Bucks win the South, but the Saints, the Saints are gonna make them earn it um, this year. And then also, you know, Tom's got some new weapons on offense outside of Mike Evans and Godwin. You also bring in Russell Gage from Atlanta, Julio, Kyle Rudolph. Can he build that chemistry quick? But what's nice is he's still got Mike Evans, he's still got Godwin his number one and number two options he's set with. So the Bucs win the South, but um, New Orleans is going to make him work for it. Yeah, it's uh, it's hard to bet against 12. And we'll move over to the AFC South. And, oh, I'm up. Let me pick here. I got the best available, Russell Gage, Tyler Boyd, DJ Chark, Sky Moore, Naheem Hines, Raheem Mostert. My last pick I took, uh, Pat Fryer Muth. Um, uh, let's see here. Pick 11, round 11, pick five. I think I go with another receiver. I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with, uh, DJ Shark. There's no number, clear cut number one, I would say. In Detroit, I think Jared Goff's going to really sh- spread the ball around. So I think their best receiver is a tight end in TJ Hawkinson. So I'm yep. going to roll with – I'm rolling with DJ Shark. He's going to probably start on the bench, but we'll see. Who knows? But we'll move over to the AFC South. And in four, team that took fourth there last year, the Houston Texans. Got a new coach, Lovey Smith. Davis Mills had – had a try going to try to build off a nice rookie year, but I just, I just don't see it. I don't, don't see it in the defense. I don't see their O line is still a mess. They don't have a, they don't have a running game. I like I, uh, Texans at four at three. This might be a little bit of a shock here. I, I just changed mine on the fly is I have the Tennessee Titans. I th- I think Ryan Tannehill, Tannehill, I think that game, that divisional round game where he threw three interceptions and the defense gave up eight sacks, I think that's still going to be sitting on him. They d- drafted Malik, uh, Malik Willis. Oh, tra- tra- like, yeah, Traylon Burks, yeah. Looked like he's going to have a nice, had a nice preseason. They traded their top receiver in A.J. Brown. Derrick Henry's back, but we'll see if he starts to show some 
show some tread on those tires. I, I just, I'm probably going to end up biting it because Mike Vrabel always seems to have those guys playing hard and they find a way to make it into the playoffs. Like they had no business last year being a one seed, but they were the one seed out of the AFC. And then at two, I have the most improved team in the NFL is the Jacksonville Jaguars. They got rid of the scumbag Urban Meyer. They've got Doug Peterson, who won a Super Bowl in Philadelphia. And Trevor Lawrence, in year two, got some nice weapons around him. Christian Kirk, Travis Etienne comes back from missing all his entire rookie year. I think there's going to be a more of a commitment to the run game. I think they're going to play good complementary football. I like the Jags to be number two and pushing for a playoff spot out of the AFC South. And at number one, I think we have in the new Falcons, Grant. The Indianapolis Colts, they're a team that everybody's going to be betting on. They're a team that I'm going to be betting on. They're probably – I'm going to lose a lot of money on them. I just mm – -hmm. I've got a good coach in Frank Reich. Matt Ryan, I think, is going to be the difference maker. Yeah. He's not going to make those boneheaded mistakes that Carson Wentz made. They're not going to have a lull in a do-or-die game. He's going to have those guys ready. They're going to ride Jonathan Taylor. They've got good receivers. They've got a good tight end. They – and they, they don't just have – after Jonathan Taylor, Naheem Hines is a really good number two back. Absolutely. And Frank Reich's going to commit to running the ball. The defense is going to be fresh because they're going to be off the field for so long. And I like the Colts to come out of a – out of the AFC South. And really, to be honest, those top three teams, I wouldn't be surprised <coughs> if any of those guys came in, came out of that division. Yeah, kind of the, the AFC South is kind of the NFC East version for the AFC. Not a whole lot to talk about. The talking heads in the media um, really don't care about anything, what these guys have to say. They're just kind of the middle child, the redhead, the redheaded child. Nobody wants to talk about the AFC South, but they're just, they're not that good. Not with you. The Houston Texans, <laughs> number, number last, last in the division. Um, Davis Mills, I have a serious question here. Who does he have to throw the ball to? Like, is Brandon Cooks? Tyler still? Johnson. Or David jo Oh, Tyler. Yeah, that's right. They signed Tyler Johnson. Um, is Brandon Cooks still in Houston? Because yep. yep. Yeah, yeah. So, but again, but he had a hurt. nice year. He had over a thousand yards last year. Yep. He had a nice year, but you got to think he's going to get hurt again. He's due. Um, he He's due. I don't. Um, Damon Pierce. Could be a nice little rookie from Florida they have at the running back spot. But they have no one to protect their quarterback. Their defense, I think, is going to be bad. Houston, it doesn't make sense the way they fired their coach and hired Lovey Smith. It's it's going to be the same same kind of run organization. They really didn't improve anything. Um, I just I don't understand what Houston's trying to do, and they're going to be fourth, and it's not going to be close. Uh, for but then the third. Uh, this is, again, where we differ. I'm going to put Jacksonville there in third. I think they are a better team, you know, like you said, with all the additions they brought in, also signing, um, you know, Brandon Sheriff from Washington to protect Trevor Lawrence on the interior. Big problem with Brandon is, is can he stay healthy? Oh, he's, we, we don't know. Uh, he's always going to, it seems like he always misses four to six games a season. But it's, I think with these new weapons on offense, Trevor is going to – it's going to take him almost, you know, not quite a full year, but, you know, eight or so games to get this chemistry down. And with uh, with Doug Peterson coming in, being his own play caller and his new offense, it's going to take him a while to learn what Trevor does well, what he likes and what he doesn't like. Um, so then towards the end of the year, you know, Jacksonville, they might win some games. And, again, kind of just like Detroit – they're going to knock some people out of the playoffs with a loss this other team shouldn't have. And people are like, like what they did last year against the Colts, you know, shoot. I, I think this year they might do that against to the Titans where the Titans need a win to get a wild card spot and they lose to the Jags. Um, so the Jags will get better as the year goes on, but they're going to be third. And for me, second, uh, it's the Tennessee Titans. Um, I, I just, I trust Mike Rabel too much. And a defense that was really good last year, it sucks that Harold Landry got hurt this year and he's going to be out, you know, with 12 sacks last year. 
Um, we still have Jeffrey Simmons and, and Bud Dupree, and you're bringing, bringing back your whole defense. Uh, losing A.J. Brown is a problem. You know, Traylon Burks, it's, it's go time. You got Robert Woods coming off an ACL tear, and then, you know, Tannehill, that egg that he laid last year in the playoffs, not good at all. But uh, I think they're going to rely heavily on Derrick Henry, and I, I think he's going to have a good year. I know he was in, you know, he's injured last year, but I think he's going to be healthy. He's going to treat his body right. And, you know, Derek, Derek's going to have a good season and he's going to carry them to second in the division, but it's not enough. The Colts, they, the best running back in football, maybe one of the best offensive players and Jonathan Taylor. Um, you know, Matt Ryan finally has an offensive line that's going to protect him. Michael Pittman Jr. He's, he's a good one. That Colts defense is salty. Uh, you bring in uh, Gus Bradley to coach that defense up. I think they're going to continue to do what they did best, harass the quarterback, keep everyone in front of them, and they're going to um, win the AFC South for what the first time since what 2014? Believe, yeah, that sounds yeah, about right. Yeah, Colts, that was. Yeah, they're they're, they're going to get back to the top last of the mountain. Healthy year. Mm -hmm. So yeah, they're going to get back to the top of the mountain. Um, this Colts team, there's it's an underrated roster. It was cool to see him last year on Hard Knocks in the season. Um, and I just – I like this team, and I think they're going to the AFC South. Yeah, and, and like, both pick the Colts. This is a big – people aren't talking about it enough, but I, I think this is a big year for Frank Reich. If they don't make the playoffs, I think he's out of a job. I do, because they've been close outside of his first year as head coach. And then the year after – Andrew Luck retiring the week a week before the regular season started. Mm -hmm. you get that, and then the next two years where they had good quarterback play, they made the playoffs in 2020, lost out, but they yep. got off to a slow start. They need to get off to a fast start this year because mm -hmm. if they get off to a slow start, Tennessee might be Tennessee or Jacksonville could be taking advantage of it. Tennessee, yep. I'd probably be more worried about. I might have talk myself into Tennessee going back to number two, but um, I think it's key for the Colts. If the Colts want to have a good season, they need to get out to a hot start and set the tone for the rest of the year right away. Mm -hmm. But we'll keep moving. We'll go off to the NFC West. And at four, oh, wow, I'm up again. Um, I like uh, – see here um, hmm. oh i'm getting into that weird time is it time for a, is it time for a kicker i'm is thinking it... i'm thinking it's time for a kicker who do i go with no it looks like uh looks like jt is gone but i've got matt gay daniel carlson brandon mcmanus I think I'm going to go with Daniel Carlson. I think the, I have a hunch the Raiders might struggle in the red zone this year. They're going to have to settle for a lot of field goals. There you go. DK is my guy. But back to the, uh, we'll stay over in the West Coast. And at four, we'll go up to the Pacific Northwest. Probably at, in the running for one of the worst town action. No, Seattle's a pretty, pretty town. I won't, I won't dog on Seattle too much. But I, I think Seattle, the Seattle Seahawks are going to be for trading Russell Wilson. I, Geno Smith, Drew Locke, take your pick for who's going to throw more interceptions this year. DK Metcalf is going to want to tr be traded after signing a new contract. He's going to want to be traded halfway through the year. Same with Tyler Lockett. They have nobody to protect either of those guys. The defense, they, I think they'll be okay, but the offense well, they is going to look They lost about Carlos, as, Carlos Dunlap, their leading sack. Yep, sack they did. From the year before. They lose him. Um, Pete they Carroll lose Bob is Wagner. the head coach. That might be a, keep them in some games, but their offense is going to be about as exciting as the Iowa Hawkeyes. So they're at four. At three – the Arizona Cardinals, big year for Cliff Kingsbury, do or die. They need to do something. They need to at least win a playoff game. I don't see that happening. 
I think he's going to be fired. I think he's going to be a dead man walking by the start of December. They're going to start start off hot. They might start off 3-1, 4-1. They got a big matchup right away week one, which we'll get into in a little bit here. But DeAndre Hopkins is out the first six weeks. Eight games, I thought. Or eight games, yes. You're right. Yeah. They're going to be the – We're going. we might get some good content, though, because they're going to be the in-season team of hard knocks. Yep. But – I don't trust Kyler Murray. I think he's going to get worn down as the year goes along. I think I don't trust that running game. Out Because I believe Chase Edmonds is down in Miami. Yes. They have James Conner. After that, they don't. They overpaid way too much for Hollywood Brown. Mm-hmm. Zach Ertz is a nice piece at tight end. Their O-line is okay, but with Kyler running around, it's hard. Sometimes protection breaks down and that's going to cause some sacks. I don't have a lot of trust in their defense. And I think they're going to have a new coach to start the 2023 season. And at two, I've got the San Francisco 49ers new era under Trey Lance. Jimmy G is still staying there, which kind of worries me a little bit saying, I don't know how much trust they have. In Trey Lance, I wouldn't be shocked if they go back to Jimmy G. Debo Samuel, can he stay healthy? The running game with Elijah Mitchell, I think as long as Kyle Shanahan's the head coach, I know they're going to be able to run the ball. The O-line is a little bit of a question mark. Outside of Trent Williams, they've kind of shaken up that that front five. The defense, they're going to get to the quarterback. I don't think see, foresee that being too much of an issue. But I think they might go through some growing pains with Trey Lance at the beginning of the season. I think that might hinder them and cost them the the NFC West crown. And representing the NFC West, again, is the defending Super Bowl champions, the Los Angeles Rams. Stafford's back, Cup's back. They signed Allen Robinson, signed Bobby Wagner. Aaron Donald is still on that defense. I don't think is Sean McVay is still the head coach. I wouldn't be shocked if they sign Odell when he's healthy enough to return from his ACL injury. And Cam Akers at running back. There's just less questions on this Los Angeles Rams, Rams team than there is the 49ers. So I like the Rams out of the West. Yeah, you know, and, I, and I'm with you, dude. Um, actually, you know, on all four. With Seattle, they call me crazy. They might be in the running for one of the, the first pick next year. I just, the, the quarterback play, the receivers, I feel like are going to quit around eight, week eight, week nine. There's going to be no running game. And this defense that Pete Carroll plays, everyone has tape on it and they know how to attack it. And they, they just don't have the horses on defense to get any stops. And I think last year was the beginning of what the Seattle team is going to look like going forward. It's going to be bad. They're going to give up a lot of points, a lot of yards. They're not going to score a lot. They're going to give other teams short fields. With the amount of interceptions they throw, Seahawks, last place. Uh, the Cardinals, they're going to, I think, going to finish in third. I just, I don't trust this team. I don't trust Cliff Kingsbury. I don't trust Kyler. Because Kyler, he's all about him. He doesn't care about the team. And I think it's slowly starting to wear off on this roster. Where you look at this team, like last year in that playoff game when Kyler was on the bench after they just got their ass kicked, nobody came over and patted him on the knees or the shoulder pad, sat down next to him and said, hey, it's going to be okay, dude. I feel like this team thinks Kyler's all about himself. And that he just, he's wearing on this team. Cliff Kingsbury is probably going to lose the locker room. Uh, you know, you have, and when D hop was out last year, that's when they really started to lose games. So they normally start the year hot. Who knows? They might start the year off. They might be two and six by the time he comes back. And at that point, it's just, it's too late. Um, advanced Joseph as your defensive coordinator, he, you, you, you can't trust this Arizona defense They have some nice players, but they just always seem to fold towards the end of the year. And I don't like this team. So I think they'll be third. And then, yeah, the, the Niners, uh, number two. 
just because you're right, they're going to have, there's going to be a bit of a transition to start the year uh, with, with Trey Lance and then um, this receiving core that he has. Kyle Shanahan trying to find an offense that fits his skill set. It'll be a work in progress, you know, for the Niners. But still, what you love most about their team is that defense and that front four. I mean, they're, they're going to get after the quarterback. You're not going to have a lot of time to throw against them. And actually, I, I think Nick Bosa, he's going to be the defensive player of the year this year. Uh, he's coming off is. his second year after. Uh, that's not my bold prediction, but I just want to throw that in there. Um, coming off that second year after his ACL tear, you know, we tore it in 2020. Um, he's back this year. He's healthy. He's energized. Um, that defense was a top 10 defense last year. And also, you know, you got Fred Warner, um, one of the best linebackers in the league right there. D'Amico Ryans will be a head coach next year. This defense is going to carry them early in the year. Um, and they're going to, they're going to become second, but again, it's, it's, uh, you know, it's the Rams division to lose. Like you said, you bring everyone back losing Andrew Whitworth is going to stink. You know, you got to get, got to get a new left tackle to protect your quarterback, but Allen Robinson, Cooper Cup, Cam Akers, Tyler Higby, Aaron Donald. Um, uh, is, I think, did they, again, re-sign Leonard Floyd? Um, I know I thought he was a one-year deal last year after the Bears. I don't know if they did that. You signed Bobby Wagner. You have Jalen Ramsey, um, the, the best coach in the division. The Rams, they got a squad. They're going to be around forever. And, uh, you know, they're going to try to break the thing that no one's been able to win back-to-back -back Super Bowl since 03, 04. Um, we'll see if the Rams can do it. It's going to be a great start of the year tomorrow against the Bills. But, um, you know, the Rams are going to start out hot like they always do with McVay, and they're going to pull away and win the West. Yep. And the, it, the, the culture Sean McVay has built in Los Angeles, the, the way he's able to bring in stars mm -hmm. and get, guy, get them to buy in, to the main goal of the team, it, it, it you do, it's it's incredible. It's second to none, and he might when whenever he decides to step away, might be able to say he is a top five coach of all time, especially you know, in in this in in a me first era the way we yeah. are in right now, the way he the culture he has developed is incredible. The, from ownership on down where everybody has mm -hmm. bought into the message of what they're going, what they're going yep. for. It, 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 it's so admirable. And and back to the Kyler point, like you said, Grant, where Kyler, it, it look at me, I'm Kyler. Another part of it too was when Buda Baker got hurt last year, probably one of the leaders of that defense, mm -hmm. when he got hurt and he was out on the stretcher, 52, 51 players went out, to go to see him. dap him up. You know who that one player wasn't? It's Kyler, Kyler Murray. Why? Because he's about Kyler. Yeah, and then sure. we'll and we'll move over to the best division in the NFL. I don't even think it's a question. Could have four playoff teams, all four in NFL first. But and it's really you could either outside of I think. As good as this division is, I think two through four, you can interchange and nobody's going to argue it. Uh -huh. Actually, it would, but I, every, there's a good argument to be made for all at all three spots. But at four, I have the Raiders. I think because there's a cycle in the NFL where there are about, on average, about six new playoff teams every year. The Raiders, they made the playoffs last year. They had a bunch of controversy with John Gruden. They, Rich Basaccia did a great job getting that team, rallying around that team, getting them to the playoffs. Could have had a chance to win it. Fell short. And Derek Carr, Devontae Adam, they got a new coach. Josh McDaniels, we'll see. Uh, Josh, Josh Jacobs is a good running back, but I'm not sure what. I think there's a few too many question marks. That defense outside of Max Crosby. And they, they signed Chandler Jones. And they signed Chandler Jones. Outside of that, I, I there's there's nobody and not much reason for optimism there. And at three, I have the Los Angeles Chargers, who 
I think Brandon Staley, I think some of it he has learned not to lean as much on analytics. I think I'd like to see him be a little bit smarter with his fourth down decision-making, went on it in his own territory a lot last year. I think he, I think he learned from that. I, I expect him, and I think even if he doesn't, I think Justin Herbert, my fantasy quarterback, is oh going to be is could could cover up a lot of those uh, deficiencies. And at two, I have the Denver Broncos made the big trade, getting a franchise quarterback in Russell Wilson. They've got some good weapons, a good running game. The O line is still a bit of a question mark. As is that defense, I'm not sure if I'm ready to go all in on that defense. They got a new head coach in Nathaniel Hackett. There's maybe a little bit too much newness, and I think they could struggle to start the year. And I like them at two in the West and at one. If anybody says anybody but the Kansas City Chiefs out of the AF to to be the best of the West, they should not be allowed to talk on TV, radio, podcast, any sort of thing. Andy Reid, Pat Mahomes still run the West. There's no doubt about it. Their defense is going to be improved. The offense might take a little bit, might struggle a little bit to start the year breaking in some new weapons. But I think if 15 and Andy Reid and the Tommy, Tommy Bahama man are on your sideline and on the field, you don't go against them. So... I like Grant's team as much as I hate to say it. I like the Kansas City Chiefs to win the West. Yeah, dude, you know, to to your point, this division, again, is just so loaded. Um, Two through four, one through four, however you want to look at it, it could be anything and everything. You just, you don't know. But uh, once again here, we agree on the people who will be having Thanksgiving dinner at the kitty table. And and it's the Las Vegas Raiders. Um, You know, Josh or Daniels, uh, second time, second go around as the head coach. The first time he failed miserably. I'm sure he learned a lot from his first time, but also he's going to be nervous and he's got to try to build that culture and not come off as arrogant and as smug as he did in Denver. And then, you know, to your point, I like what you said, Dylan, about besides Max Crosby and Chandler Jones, who else on that defense is going to make a play and get a turnover? or get a good, good stop on fourth down. There's no interior pass rush. They have no linebackers, and their secondary still can't cover anyone. I think as we're talking right now, Travis Kelsey just went for 130 and two touchdowns. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, I mean, um, Abrams from Mississippi State, he's, he's the, what, third or fourth year player now? He's so hit or miss. He's been injured. He's been injured a lot. I just, I don't. I don't trust this defense. And that's been the Raiders problem for the last 15 years. And then, you know, Derek Carr and Devontae Adams, you know, I know you guys, they're best friends at Fresno state. and They love each other. This isn't the mountain West anymore. This is the national football league. You're playing against professionals. Um, and Devontae, you don't have Aaron throwing you the ball anymore. These back shoulder passes that um, Aaron put on the money in the sideline in the end zone, Derek's not doing that. Um, Can they be the running game? Now that Hanfro, Renfro, excuse me. That's a good one. I like that. It's a combination, a combination of Hunter and Renfro. Um, Now that he's not the one, how's he going to react like this? Can Darren Waller stay healthy? Someone in this division has to finish in last place. And I just, I think it's be the Raiders because they have the most question marks. And at third place, I'm going to go with the Denver Broncos. Ooh. Like you said, that's because you hate much. Russell Wilson. I do not like Russell Wilson. You're, I am not you're not, a, Wilson you're not riding with Broncos country. Broncos. Country. I, believe Let's it or not, ride. I will not be riding on Broncos country. I will not be riding on Broncos country because again, there's, there's too much newness going on here. Hackett's coming in from green Bay. Well, what did I just say about Devontae Adams? How much was he calling the plays? Was he designing the red zone offense? Or was it was Aaron just kind of sitting back and was he on whatever he's on? And he said, Hey, hold my beer, guys. I got this team. I I I don't know with Hackett and then also with Denver. I like their running game. They're two young, they're two backs, but they're receivers. Cortland Sutton's always injured. Um, Jerry Judy, he's been injured and he hasn't been, you know, the top 12 pick that's so far in his first years. Again, not his fault. 
he came from Alabama when he was surrounded by stallions. Um, and now that he's in Denver, he doesn't have that protection anymore. And they, I know a couple of weeks ago, they lost a receiver and a tight end to a torn ACL. So bringing in that new offense, that cohesion, I think they're going to, it's going to take some time. And then also let's not forget Russell Wilson's going to fall apart every year after Thanksgiving. I understand that there's no time to sleep, Russell, but when you're in the, in the NFL and you're only getting four and a half hours of sleep throughout the whole season, it's going to catch up with you. Um, so just a little too much change there in Denver. Uh, and then second, again, I like the Chargers. Um, a lot of big new additions on this defense. Will it work out? To be determined. You know, J.C. Jackson going away from New England. What's he going to be like away from Belichick? And that then that coaching staff, Khalil Mack has been hurt. Um, Joey Bosa's when he's when he's great, he's great, but he's also hurt and he's inconsistent some. And they still have no linebackers. Again, uh, Derwin James signs this nice new contract, highest paid safety in the NFL. He's always hurt. Who are they? Who do they have that can guard Travis Kelsey? I don't know yet. And Brandon Staley, as a head coach, he he scares me. He's he's too aggressive. He should have beaten the Chiefs on a Thursday night, but he went for it three or four times in his own territory, gave the Chiefs a short field. Um, I think he's, he's almost too aggressive to a fault. You have a good team like this. It's okay to make the other team play field possession. It's okay to make, make the Chiefs go 84 yards on a touchdown drive. You know, you know Brandon in there. And then also, um, can, they're just, can their receivers, can they stay healthy? And is Austin Eckler going to have 20 touchdowns again this year? I, I don't know. I, that, that's a lot to ask for. So, but the Chargers, they'll be a good team. And if there will be competition for the Chiefs, it will be the Chargers. And again, like you said, Chiefs, they're, gonna, they're coming out in the West again. You have the best coach, the best quarterback in the division. You know, this will be Andy's 10th year in Kansas City. He, you know, 10 plus years in Philadelphia. Uh, I like this young, improved roster. And I think this offense is going to be better than people um, think it's going to be because they're going to change their philosophy up. They're going to realize we don't have Tyreek anymore. We're not going to be able to take the top off the defense and kind of like what they had to learn last year. There will be a lot of um, not quite thinking and dunking. They're going to take what the defense gives them and it'll be a death by a thousand paper cuts. And this defense is going to be better. Uh, they might have one of the best young linebacking cores in the NFL. They it's do an lose, exciting year this year for the Chiefs. They do lose, though, probably one of the best safeties in the league in Daniel Sorensen. And I know you. Oh, well, how can we forget still about haven't that? Rec- still haven't recovered from that. Well, I don't know what's worse, his cover skills or his hairline. <laughs> <laughs> uh, poor Daniel Sorensen. Uh, <laughs> Somewhere in New Orleans, Tyler, Tyron Matthews putting both hands out like, what is this dude doing already? He already did. He already has. Yep. Mike Evans just scored. Yeah. <laughs> and, well, it, to, your, to your point, so my biggest question with the Chiefs is I, there, there's talk of they've learned they're going to do a death by a thousand paper cuts, but does Andy Reid have the patience to do that? Because he still does not like to run, hasn't, has yet to find a run play he likes. I question that, but I think that's going to be good enough to get them to win the reg- win in the regular season. And if I think where he really needs to d- commit to the run game is in the postseason. And the one time he did, it, it paid off for him. He's holding up. He got a Super Bowl. And then with the Chargers, for me, is they lean too, like you with Brandon Staley, too risk he's risky to a fault and they lean too uh-huh. much on the analytics there and i think analytics has has a place in the game but there's no stat or formula you can punch in for toughness or how the flow of the game is going or fourth and one there's different sections of fourth and one there's a short one there's a long one where it's almost fourth and two mm-hmm. you shouldn't be going for it on your side of the field when it's fourth fourth and one but really fourth and two that's a long yeah. that is a lot of yards in the nfl so we'll see if they've learned from it i there's some question marks from what brandon staley has said in press conferences where he's fully into it he's gonna he's he's gonna continue to be the gunslinger 
We'll see if that's going to be his fault, his downfall. But, yeah, I if if anybody says that somebody other than the Chiefs are winning the West, they, sh- they should be slapped. Oh. And we'll move over. We'll do our we'll go we'll do our top seven. We've been going for a while now, almost two hours here. And uh we'll we'll do our we'll do our seven playoff teams from the east and the west, and then Super Bowl prediction and then MVP. So so in the NFC, in the NFC at seven, I have the Dallas Cowboys. I think they there's still enough talent there, they'll be able to sneak in, win enough games in that weak division. And then at six, I got the Minnesota Vikings. I think under new new coach Kevin O'Connell, they're going to be amped up, charged up. Their Kirk Cousins is going to have the best year of his career. Maybe that's my bold prediction. And then at five, I got the 49ers. There's still too much talent on that team. They might take some growing pains with Trey Lance, but 49ers get in at that five spot. I think I think that the West comes down to the final week. Rams 49ers and then at four I have the Eagles coming out of the NFC wet East three the Packers two the Bucks and then at one I have the Rams again I think they're gonna keep riding that hot start and that's gonna propel them to get the one seed have a really good regular season and they'll be clicking in the road road to the Super Bowl which is in the road to Arizona goes through Los Angeles this mm-hmm. year and representing actually, no, we'll, we'll I'll, I'll go to AFC and then Grant will do his. So at seven in the AFC, I have the chargers. I have the chargers sneaking in. And then at six, I have the Denver Broncos. I think they, they get back to the playoffs from for the first time since they've won the Super Bowl in 2015 at five third wild card team i have the cincinnati Bengals. they make a return and then at four coming out of the afc south is the indianapolis colts three kansas city chiefs i think they have a little bit of a slow start start to the year and that pushes them down a little bit to the three seed and then at two the ravens one of the best regular season teams not sure if they're going to be able to get over to the hump and then at one this current Super Bowl favorite, they kick off tonight, the Buffalo Bills. Yep, so we kind of got, you know, some similarities and some differences here. Uh, for me, on the, the NFC side, the number seven seed, uh, the New Orleans Saints. Like I said, I think they learn, Dennis Allen learns from his mistakes. And that defense, Jameis coming, is coming back. They'll be the seventh seed. Uh, I like the Niners at the sixth. Um, still early in the year, they got to figure out what Trey Lance does well, what he doesn't do well, what this team is built for. But come Veterans Day and on, Thanksgiving and on, this team, they're going to find their identity and they're going to be a team you don't want to mess with. They're built for December. But start the year, they're going to be a little slow. But that'll slow them down, but they'll be the sixth seed. And then Green Bay uh, is, is the number five. Them and the Vikings are going to duke out that division. But I just think it's going to take a little too long for Aaron to build chemistry with his wide receivers to win the division this year, but they still get in as the five seed. And then again, the Eagles, number four, um, they're, you know, a good team. But when I th- look at these other three teams going into the division that I have, I, I just don't see the Eagles anywhere in the top three in the NFC. And then the Minnesota Vikings at number three, change of culture, a uh, breath of fresh air with O'Connell. Kirk's going to have a good year. I think this defense is going to be flying around, switching to the 3-4. So I like the Vikings as the three seed. And then Tampa Bay at the two. This just also might come down to where I think they'll at least be four and two in their division. Hell, they might be five and one. And, uh, you know, Tom's, Tom is going to get rolling. I think Tom Todd Bowles is going to come in there and calm things down. It's not going to be as fiery as Arians. So it'll be good for that locker room. And then the Rams is the number one seed. Again, they're going to get off to a hot start like they do with McVay every year. And they're almost going to be going too well uh, for people to catch up to them. So I like the Rams as the one seed. And then in the AFC, uh, the Denver Broncos at D7. Ooh. 
Um, you know, like I said, I, they're going to maybe get off to a little slower start. And then, you know, Russell always kind of cools off um, in December there. But they, again, they, they got a good, they got a top five defense in this league. And I think that'll propel them into the playoffs now that they have a competent quarterback. Baltimore Ravens as the, uh, the sixth seed. All they do is get good players in the draft and free agency and build a good roster. Even though they don't have as many receivers, John Harbaugh and that staff will find them ways to win a game. Win games in December when it matters. And just like Brandon Staley, Harbaugh might not be as much on the analytics. He's going to kick more field goals this year, kick extra points, and the Ravens win some games. And then the Chargers as the five seed. Like I said, I like this team. I think they're getting better, but I don't think Austin Eckler will have the year that he had last year, but it's still a good defense. Brandon will learn from his mistakes and they will get into the playoffs this year. He will not call a timeout like he did uh, against the Raiders there for that game will not end in a tie. And then the four seed, I like the Indianapolis Colts. Again, they're just kind of the class of the South. They got a good team. I think they're finally going to have more steady quarterback play. So the Colts out of the South and for me, the Bengals at the three. Um, I think they're going to, they're going to be better than last year. They're going to be improved with this new offensive line. It might take a while for them to get going, but they're, they're going to be the three seed and maybe I'm bullish here, but uh, I got the Kansas City Chiefs as the two seed. Again, I think, I think Omer. Andy and Patrick are going to sit back and they're going to realize what they don't have. And we have to stick to this. Um, I think that, with one of the better offensive lines in the NFL, they are going to run the football because they look at the second half of that Bengals game and the AFC title game, they got away from the run. And that's why they didn't play in the Super Bowl this year and improved defense. So the Chiefs at the two and then the number one seed, the Buffalo Bills. Um, you know, out of the AFC, they're just, I think going to be the class of this conference this year. They're going to be on a mission and they're, they're going to be a damn good football team. Yes, indeed. And so for the Super Bowl matchup, I got the Bills versus the Bucks. So a little bit of a throwback of the AFC East of Tom Brady versus the Buffalo Bills. And this has to be Tom Brady's last year. And I can't see this going any different than Tom Brady riding out on a white horse at the scene of the crime where he lost his perfect season. Came back in 2014, they won. They beat the Seahawks. I have them beating the Bills in the Super Bowl. And Tom Brady rides out, gets that storybook ending we all dream of for him. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I had the Bills in the Super Bowl. But uh, this is where I differ. You know how I said the Niners were the sixth seed? They're built for November and December. I think the Niners are going to get on a hot streak, and they will – intercept that Matt Stafford pass this year and San Francisco makes the Super Bowl, but the Buffalo Bills will be just a little too much for them. I I think this is going to be the Bills year where they're, they're going to be focused. Sean McDermott is going to realize that I can't make stupid decisions with the clock as a head coach. They're going to, they're going to be focused. They're going to um, um, be involved more in the running game on the offensive end to take some pressure off Josh Allen. And I just, I think this Bills, they're a good football team, and I think they're going to be ready to play. So I like i like the Buffalo Bills to finally get that Super Bowl, and all the white tables in America will be smashed um, that night and or the next day, which will be beautiful social media to see. And I can't there, wait for that. There will be a lot of tables smashed and a lot of chicken wings consumed. Correct. We will have a Buffalo sauce shortage in this country for the end of time. Just when we get the- chicken wings back, we lose them. <laughs> we lose them. Yep, it's all the Bill Stan's fault. <laughs> but there you have it. Our my my MVP is Patrick Mahomes. I think I think he's gonna return. He probably had an argument he could have won it the last couple of years, but didn't. I think Patrick Mahomes wins the MVP. And Grant, I think this is where you give us your bold prediction. Yes. So bold prediction time and MVP times. I don't know if we were stealing notes. But I also have Patrick McCombs as the MVP. Like I said, I think with the Tyreek Hill trade, him and Andy are going to get together this year, um, and they're going to prove out to say, hey, look what we can do. And he's going to really carry this Chiefs team to a two seed, but the Bills get revenge this year and win an AFC title game in Buffalo. 
but still Patrick Mahomes MVP. But yeah, my bold prediction for the year, I have a NFL single season record that I think will be broken. And this is a passing league. Everybody wants to talk about Cooper cups, hundred and what 20 catches last year. Michael Thomas had 149 in a year. I'm going to kick it old school with this team in Nashville, Tennessee. You lose AJ Brown. Traylon Burks is a rookie. Robert Woods coming off a torn ACL. I think Derrick Henry is going to get over a thousand yards and he is going to break Eric Dickerson's record. And he'll have what? 21, at least 2,106 yards on the year. Like I said, I think Derrick could have a Adrian Peterson type comeback year off injury. He's going to be focused. He's got that 17th game uh, to help him, which Adrian would have needed to beat Dickerson's record. Uh, I, I think Derek's going to be on a mission. And with the Colts, uh, sorry, with the Titans fighting for a playoff spot, um, I have them, of course, losing that to the Broncos. They're going to they're gonna ride Derek. They're going to ride him. They're going to ride him. And I think he will get over that Eric Dickerson mark, and we will have a new single-season rushing record leader in the wow. NFL at the end of this season. Well, there you have it. Those are our predictions. We're going to kick it over. We're going to discuss our favorite, our team's week one games. We'll start with the Cowboys bucks. That game is six 30 mountain time on Sunday, the Sunday night game bucks are two and a half point favorites. Tom Brady has never lost to the Cowboys in his career. Cowboys. They're going to be without Michael Gallup. They're going to be breaking in a new offensive line. Zeke today in an interview said that him and Paul, there's been some They've been scheming up. They've been opening up the playbook a little bit that there's there's going to be times where him and Tony Pollard are both going to be on the field together, which intrigues me. I think we need to see more Tony Pollard. Tony Pollard should be the number one running back. He's not, but maybe if he is, the Cowboys are the one seed, but are the one, the team that wins the NFC East, but he's not. And I, this and there's been a lot of drama around Brady. Was he on the mass Singers? He could be having some issues with his personal life. I don't know that both teams are coming in a little bit hobbled. It sounds like uh, Chris Godwin is going to play, but Tom, the, the Tom Brady's record against the Cowboys speaks for itself. It's it'd be hard for me to pick. I I'll give out my picks uh, Sunday morning my NFL picks. I'll give out my college picks, which we'll get here too shortly on uh, Friday. So stay tuned for that. But like I said, I, I just don't have any hope or there's just nothing about this Cowboys team that excites me. If, if they, if they start playing well, you're damn right. I'm going to be jumping on the train, but until then I, I, there's just nothing. I, I have nothing. There's just nothing I can yeah. get excited about with this team. Yeah. Only shot the Cowboys have in this game is if Micah Parsons, Demarcus Lawrence, and that front can get to Tom four or five times, have him be on the ground all the time, maybe with that pressure, cause an interception. Because if Tom is sitting back there with a clean pocket, it's over. They're going to they're gonna beat Trayvon Diggs on a double move because he's going to be looking at Tom's eyes and, and not the receiver. And Tom's going to light this defense up for 350 and four tutties. Like I said, they have they have to get home. And if I'm the Dallas Cowboys, Micah Parsons, you're rushing right end all game. I'm coming at Donovan Smith. I'm I know sometimes in the last year he was rushing left defensive end. You're not going up against Tristan Morris. We're not we're not doing that. We're gonna do what Belichick does with his best corner. You're gonna put his best corner on the second best wide receiver. And we're just going to attack you all day. We're going to shut you down. And then Demarcus Lawrence, he's got to win some battles against Tristan Norris, or you might have to move him inside. But if they don't have constant pressure on Brady, I think it's, it's going to be an ugly. It could be an ugly night. Need a big game from defense. Anthony Barr. But that's right. I forgot Anthony Barr a free agent yeah. signing there in the offseason. Yep. If I think if he's used correctly, I think he's going to be. He could be a good situational third down guy where they can move Lawrence inside, bring him have him mm-hmm. go down, put his hand in the dirt and rush the passer. I think that's where you're going to see the best Anthony Barr. Keep his snaps limited, keep him on the field, keep him healthy. But yeah. We'll we'll move over 
Chiefs Cardinals. That game is in Arizona. Chiefs are six point favorites. That's an afternoon slate. That goes right up against the Vikings Packers. But Grant, how are we feeling about this first Chiefs game? You know, we're feeling cautiously optimistic. Um, and I'm not going to lie, having D-hop out is huge. Because with these Chiefs corners, uh, you know, Elagerius Sneed, I think he could be a future future pro bowler in this league. He, he's had a good first two years in this league. Um, but then on the depth chart as of right now, it's Trent McDuffie. Rookie, first game in the NFL against the Cardinals and, and Cliff Kingsbury. They're going to try to, they're going to try to go deep. Um, they're going to try to probably attack him. And then also Justin Reed back there in the, in the secondary. So some new out of safety position, some new players. Communication is going to be key. But I think um, this Chiefs front four is going to be, have a different mindset this year. Frank Clark gave up alcohol this off season, gave up red meat. He was down 15, 10, 10, 15 pounds going into training camp. And people said his play looked a lot better. Andy Reid brought him into his office this year and said, hey, Frank, if you don't do it, you're off this team after this year. But you got Chris Jones on the inside, Carl Loftus as a rookie. And then, like I said before, I've said it again, these young linebackers, Willie Gay, Nick Bolton, Leo Chanel, um, the rookie out of Wisconsin, I think they're going to they're gonna bring it. The Cardinals try to run the ball. We're going to be physical with them. They're going to feel us. And the Cardinals just, they won't have a pass rush. And there's no one better in this league off of bye week or going into week one better than Andy Reid. He's going to have all of Vance Joseph's film. And I think breaking in this new offense, he's going to design plays to get players open and have, have Patrick put these guys in a good spot to succeed. Okay. All right. So are, are you predicting a win? Chiefs start 1-0? and Chiefs start 1-0. and Will they cover okay. this? Was it six, six and a half? Six, six um, right before not. I started. No, okay. Probably not, but I, I um, but what's the record against the spread? I don't give a damn as long as we're one and oh. <laughs> there it is. And we'll move over to Grant's home state, my neighboring state. The Vikings are set to play the Packers in the Fox game of the week. Packers right now are one and a half point favorites. This line has dropped a lot. It's, I think it opened as a three and a half point favorite. The Packers were. Mm -hmm. I, I first thing for me is I want to see this Vikings defense, see how different they look, see if they are improved, see if Zadarius Smith is going to back up his talk about how he wanted to play play this team twice a year, mm -hmm. see if Daniil Hunter if he's going to be able to get after a Raj, see how Aaron Rodgers breaks in his new weapons, and then. Uh, Bakhtiari, it sounds like he is on track to play. So we'll see. That's going to be a that's going to be a matchup that I'll be interested. To, we'll definitely want to circle, see how improved the offensive line on the Vikings is, see if the Vikings are able to stop the run. Something as much of a defensive coach as Mike Zimmer was, they could not. They struggled to stop the run under his tenure. Mm -hmm. Oh, and Vikings, exactly, and you they, know with these new weapons that green Bay has the new receiving core offensive line who are you know, still injured a little bit. Green Bay is going to have to run the ball because I don't think, you know, Aaron doesn't have trust in his receivers yet to make it a passing game. So if Aaron has to throw it 35, 40 times, that probably also means the Packers are down. Um, so it, it's all going to come down to up front. Can, can Zedarius, Daniel, Delvin Tomlinson and Harrison Phillips for the Vikings make the Packers one dimensional and make Aaron trust he's these receivers that he doesn't have a lot of chemistry with right away. We'll see. Um, like I think, I think that's going to be the game right there because to your point with it, besides Patrick Peterson, I don't know if this Viking secondary can hold up if Aaron has time to throw. Um, so just kind of like when you're playing Tom and what Dallas has to do, you have to get after the quarterback. You, you can't let him sit back and still pocket. So, We'll see. We'll see if this is like the Vikings brass said, if this was all Zimmer's fault or if these players just weren't that good. Yeah, it's going to be something to watch. Football season is right around the corner here. We can taste it. Taste mm -hmm. it. it. It's going to be a long Thursday waiting around for this game. I already tell. And we'll move over to the college game. There's a couple of good, good games. We won't discuss it all. This has been a pretty uh, long podcast here. We've been going for over two hours now. 
and we'll we'll discuss we'll discuss Michigan, Hawaii, Iowa, Iowa State, discuss some NDSU, and then Alabama, Texas. That's probably the biggest game of the week, the one most people are talking about. But we'll start Michigan, Hawaii. Michigan plays at 6 p.m. They are 51 point favorites, the first 50 point favorite of the year. The game kicks off at 6 p.m. Mountain on Big Ten Network. J.J. McCarthy is making his first start. Cade McNamara is going to be playing some. I'm. We're going to see. This is going to be a battle. I don't think it's going to be over after this game. But this is going to be the first time we're going to see real extensive action of J.J. McCarthy, who a lot of Michigan fans want as the starter, but Harbaugh, Cade McNamara, to his credit, he's done things that no Michigan quarterback has done in 17 years since we were in elementary school. He won the Big Ten. He beat Ohio State. He He's done some stuff. He had a little bit of a shaky shaky game. I if I have, if I were a betting man and I am, I think JJ McCarthy is going to be the guy by the end by the end of the year. But we'll see. I I expect JJ to use more of his legs. We'll see how the re- receivers respond. We'll see how in sync he is with them. But it's not going to matter. I that's probably the biggest thing, especially in this game, is I want to see see how much guys improve from week one to week two. I want to watch the D-line, see if they can replicate their week one performance with 11 TFLs, seven sacks. Some of their guys that are looking as replacements for Aiden Hutchinson and David Ojabo, if they can build off their strong week one performances. I This, this game should be over. I don't like a 6 p.m. kickoff against Hawaii because they're just standing around all day. It's at night. They're playing a team they're favored to win by 50. Come out sluggish. Maybe this is just the coach and me talking and the way our junior high team played yesterday was we can't we we played a little bit sloppy, but we'll see. And well that that that's going to be real measuring stick if they go out and jump on a team like Hawaii like they like they should, I, I'm going to feel more and more confident about this team because the last time they played a lackluster team with against Middle Tennessee when they opened the 2019 year, they came out flat, they came out sloppy, they had turnovers, and it just set the tone the rest of the year. So I hope they jump on them and beat them by 50. Well, yeah, they, they should and they will. I mean, Christ, even if, even if McCarthy and his receivers aren't much – for the chemistry yet because you still still got to build that you got to think this Michigan offensive line in this running game is just going to wear Hawaii down um and they're just you know they're just going to come out and they're eventually going to break their back this game it, it shouldn't be a game it should be like 55 to 10 if we're being serious when this when this when this thing gets over yeah and we'll see it's a it's a long time to wait 6 p.m but we'll move over to your to your team, Iowa, Iowa State, looking to actually score a touchdown and more than three points for their offense. Iowa is a three-and-a-half-point favorite. And Grant, in previous years, you have not been too, uh, too worried about Iowa State, but the way this off, Iowa's offense is played, Iowa State always seems to have a pretty good offense. Are you still not sweating Iowa State, or are you, are, are you a little nervous about this game? Oh, I'm sweating Iowa State now. No. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh oh. Well, it, look, look, look what, look what the, look what this offense put up last week. It was a ninth grade level offense at the Division One level. It was, it was ridiculous. It was embarrassing. Um, you put up three points against an FCS team. I don't care if they've had some, some of these South Dakota State players said, "Oh, we, we were, we should have been recruited by Iowa." No, you were recruited into an FCS school for a reason, because. Every Big Ten team didn't think you could play in the Big Ten. And for an Iowa offense to put up three points, it's, it's embarrassing. And for Petrus to miss some of the throws that he missed, you shouldn't be on the field with that. And what concerns me with this Iowa offense is this. If they come out and they play the same way they did last week, all it's going to take is one Iowa State touchdown, and this, this game could be over. Like the pass that South Dakota State missed, Going into the second second quarter, Iowa State probably makes that pass. It's seven three going into halftime. Even if they get a couple field goals after that, 
can Iowa score 14 points to win? I, 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 I don't know. It, and it's almost like, it's not like I'm scared of Iowa state. I'm afraid of Iowa's offense. Because I, you know, Iowa State, they got a good, they got a good, nice um, freshman. Oh, he's a freshman last year, sophomore defensive end from Milwaukee. He's a freshman All American last year. He's a nice player, so he could get after Patriots and get after quarterback. But besides that, new wide receivers on offense, a new quarterback, a new running back. You lose your All American tight end last year. Iowa State's going to be down this year compared to years past. But if Iowa's offense can't step up to the game, it could be a long day because. Long game because Iowa State, they're always going to have one of the best defenses in the Big 12. And since Matt Campbell's taken over from 2018 on, this Iowa State defense has given Iowa trouble. When they played in last year, Iowa scored 27 points. Well, seven of those was um, when Jack Campbell picked up a fumble and brought it to the end zone from four yards out. So realistically, the offense still only scored only 20 points last year. So from what I saw last week, from the little bit that I saw, yeah, I'm worried about this offense because you're not going to win four games a year with that offense. And in a rivalry game, a team who hasn't beaten you since 2014, if they can come in and win in your backyard, that's huge. Yeah, I I think I think with this rivalry game, I, I think Iowa's going to come out a little bit energized. I think Ferentz is going to have those boys ready. I think they're going to be ready come out and play some smash mouth football. I'm yeah. Iowa covers the three and a half and the Cyhawk trophy stays home. You heard it here first, which is where it should be. Exactly. And then I would, they did mix up their offensive line a little bit. Uh, the right tackle last week, he's going to go inside to right guard. They're going to have a new right tackle, I believe, because they got beat up inside so much last week. So they're trying to switch or switch around there a little bit. Okay, yeah, we'll see if that works out. But Iowa, three and a half, that's the pick. And we'll move over to the game of the week in college football. Alabama at goes to DKR, plays the Texas Longhorns. Alabama, they are 20-point road favorites. That game is the big noon kickoff game of the week. That's 10 a.m. Mountain Time on Fox. College game day is going to be there. Big noon kickoff will be there. It's going to be – the names are going to be big. I think Texas, they're offensively. I think they're going to be able to move the ball 20 to 20. They Mm -hmm. want a shot. They got to find ways to put the ball in the end zone. I don't think the deep – they have the defense yet to hang with – to hang with Texas. I think Alabama's going to give up yards. I think they find ways to keep Texas out of the end zone. And – if Texas wants – and if Texas does find a way to win, and I don't even – I don't even think Texas has to win for them to have hope. I think if Quinn Ewers has a good game and shows out, I think there's a lot of reason for optimism for this Texas squad this year. But I, I think Alabama wins. I think they win going away. I think it's close at halftime. I think it's – it's a one possession game at halftime, but in the end, I think Alabama, they've got too much strength on the in in the trenches on the offense and defensive lines where they're just going to wear Texas down and Texas won't have enough to keep up. I, I would agree. And, and personally, I think if Texas wants to stay in this game, it's got to be the B. John Robinson show. You have to have possession of this football for 35 to 37 minutes. You know, Bryce Young just can't touch the field because like what we saw last week, I don't care if it was Utah State, this Alabama team, they're going to score quick and they're going to score often. <laughs> and this Alabama, this Texas defense, Sark recruited a lot of guys on the defensive line and linebackers last year because he knows that's where they need to get better. Well, guess what? This is your welcome to college experience, bro. Because <laughs> you, <laughs> you're not... <laughs> You know, you're not you're not at Westlake there in Austin anymore um, playing 16 year olds, but you're just bigger, faster, stronger than you are that 16 year old who's who's undermatched. Uh, They're just they're just not there yet. Texas needs to control the ball. They need to keep that defense. Off the field. And your your point is exactly right, Dylan. They need they need to score touchdowns in the red zone. Um, 
you know, Quinn's going to have to make a couple of plays like that. And you just have to keep your defense off the field because Alabama's offense, they're going to score in bunches and they're going to score quick. Uh, but the one interesting thing is I will be intrigued to see how both teams conditioning is because it's going to be that 11 o'clock kickoff and that hot Texas sun. Um, and, you know, being so I was in, you know, at the game last year against Oklahoma State, that field goes north and south. And that sun, it's going to rise in the east and it's going to it's going to during that whole game, it's going to be right over that stadium. So these players are going to be hot. They're going to be uncomfortable. They're going to it's going to be humid. What's the conditioning like for both of these teams? It'll be a good test early, early in the year, you know, for that aspect. And, you know, for Texas, to your point they got to keep this close because if it snowballs like that Arkansas game did last year, it's going to set the tone for the rest of this season. Um, yep. And after watching Oklahoma play last week, that's a good football team. That's a team oh, yeah. that Texas, they're not built to play against as of right now because Venables and that staff, they're fast, they're physical, and they're going to come after you. So they need to get some confidence going, you know, into October and into big 12 play. And if they, you know, to your point, if they get blown out by 28, 30 points, I think there's going to be a lot of people thinking, oh, we're doing this again here in Austin. So they got to come out, they got to run the ball, establish Bijan early, and they got to keep that Alabama on the sideline. Because if, if that Alabama offense is on the field for 28 to 32 minutes, oh, it's going to be a long day. Yeah. And I, I think if Texas wins the toss, I think they defer. Because I think they want that offense. They want to send that Alabama offense on the field when it is loud. They're rocking. That place is going to be yep. as filled as it will ever be filled. Yep. And we'll see. And and Sark, who I believe, who who will probably have a script of about ten to fifteen plays. That script they need to get. They need to be. They need to get a touchdown, and they need to be driving for a second touchdown. If that mm-hmm. of that script to to have a shot. They need to start fast because Alabama, you can't keep them contained for long. No, they're going to, that, that offense is going to find ways to explode. So we'll see. And, it's going to be a heck of a game. And then also what Texas needs to do is they need to find Will Anderson before every snap. Yep. And they need to double team him. They need to chip him because Texas, they have a lot of young kids on that offensive line. And if they're not ready for it, um, number 31 will, will take over that day. <laughs> Yeah, the Will Heisman, Will Anderson Heisman campaign is gonna could be starting. At, could be uh, started in Austin, Texas, yep. by about three p.m. Central Time on Saturday afternoon. Yeah, <laughs> and and we'll move over to down to the FCS where NDSU plays North Carolina A and T. They've got they beat Drake last week. Came out a little bit sluggish compared to what they usually do to start the year. You you would expect them the way they coming off a national championship, come out fast. Drake, to their credit, had a really good good start. They moved the ball. They went down right down the field, scored a touchdown, and were driving before a blocked field goal, and then it was over. But I think the NDSU coaches and myself, I'm looking for, for a fast start. Jump on these guys early. They're a 33-and-a-half point favorite, and hopefully they are not looking ahead the next week to when they go down to Arizona who looks much improved from the year before. There's still questions. I, The receiving room bothers me. There's not a lot of – I. there's some talent there, but I just it just hasn't come to fruition yet. There's, there's a lot of question marks. Zach Mathis looked good. Is Phoenix Sproles the number one receiver? I don't know. He's been a, had a very inconsistent career at NDSU, battling some injuries and just inconsistent play at some drops. But we've seen the flashes. We'll see if he can do it consistently. And I want to see some improvement. The kicker is a question. Will Cardinal, he missed the chip shot 20-yard field goal. That's going to be a competition. It's not going to matter against North Carolina A&T, but it could the next week. It could in Valley play when they play UND. They play South Dakota State. South Dakota, Southern Illinois, it could, and in the playoffs, you need a reliable kicker, something they've always seemed to have. 
Cam Cam Peterson of note is the one that really kind of comes to my mind as far as having an up and down career. But when it was crunch time, he made the kicks in 15 his red shirt or his freshman year. He struggled. He struggled. He was actually benched in the semifinal game against Richmond. They had Ben LeCompte come in and kick the PATs. And then in the in the national championship game against Jacksonville State, he went four for four. He kicked the game winning kick against Iowa. He kicked the the next year he kicked the game had a game winning kick on the road in Youngstown State. This year, I there it it's early. We'll see if there's if, if him or Will Cardinal or Griffin Crosso see if any of them there's going to be any separation between the two. Time will tell. And then I want to see more of Cole Payton. He looked a little bit shaky, and that's why he is the backup, and Cam Miller is still the guy. He looked a little bit shaky as a passer. I think he's still running the ball. I would wouldn't be surprised. I'd be shocked if they don't have a type of running package. I bet you they're kind of waiting to hold that in against until they play Arizona or get into Valley play. But North Carolina a t has some athletes. They got a Minneapolis North product, uh, Zach Jagger, who is their quarterback. He's a good athlete. Uh, he had he had a lot of Missouri Valley offers. I wasn't sure. I think he was recruited as an athlete, and he had offers from South Dakota State. I think NDSU did show some interest. I'm not sure at what position, but but he's a good good athletic player. But I don't think this game is going to be too close. I think NDSU pulls away. I would just the things that I kind of highlighted. I want to see him get out to a fast start. I want to see some improvement from the receiver some consistency i think is the right word i'm looking for is just just some consistent a consistent go-to guy if they can find that i think they're going to be just fine yeah and you know i'm not gonna lie it's kind of hard for me to follow follow the bison here now because you know being in minnesota they're not you know on tv packages for us but from what you just said now dylan and what um you know the beat writer had on when we had a couple weeks ago can this ndsu receiving core um, develop and grow throughout the year and, and make some plays when they need them, you know, on the road against Arizona or on the road in Valley play, you know, can this receiving core um, develop and grow and help this team win a game or not? That, you know, that's one thing to look out throughout the whole year. Yeah. And it, it it's hard to, it, and we, we could talk about a Christian Watson or play. No one's going to replace Christian Watson. You, you have to do that by committee because He's a one one in once in a life generation talent that goes through NDSU. Mm-hmm. They just need guys consistently move the sticks, rely on that run game. But when it's a third and eight and you need a first down, who are you going to? There mm-hmm. needs to be a receiver that establishes himself as that dude. And really, the only other game around the FCS that might pique some interest is uh is the uh, Grizzly Montana Grizzlies host the South Dakota Coyotes. The, out in uh, Missoula, so that'll be a good game to keep an eye on. I think Montana rolls them, but we'll kick it over to Grant and we'll we'll put a bow on this two and a half hour show we're going for. We got a new record, Grant, for longest mm-hmm. longest podcast. So we'll kick it over to you for curveball of the week. So you know, as everyone saw in Hard Knocks, Aiden Hutchinson stole the show when he got up and they made the rookie perform Billy Jean. Um, every other rookie besides that went up there and, you know, you had Malcolm Rodriguez try to dance, you know, salsa dancer there with his Hispanic heritage wasn't the same. And then Pimpleton uh, wide receiver was juggling, but it got me thinking, Dylan, if we were rookies in the NFL and we were put on the spot and we had to sing in the auditorium in front of the team, what song are you singing and why? Oh God. Uh, I would be tucked in the farthest corner of that auditorium, way down, hunched down here, and I'm kind of showing it that so no, oh, I no. would not get called on. Oh man! No, but, you know these coaches—they're going to have a rookie talent show. They're going to know who's young. They're going to know who's ripe, um, and they're going to say, "Get your ass up here and perform." I need a song now. Go. Well. I, I, I say I will do all I will I would definitely hide in the corner for sure. Try not to be noticed, but that would probably draw yep. attention to me anyways. And I would do it because that's a good way to lose lose respect in 
in the locker room is by if I if I throw a fit and not do it. So yep. I would do it and oh that's the problem is like I don't I don't know. I can't sing a song word for word. I don't Yeah. Oh man. I mean maybe if I had like some music behind it, like I couldn't just go a cappella like Hutchinson did. Yeah. But I don't know, maybe maybe American Badass by Kid Rock. Okay. That might be it. I think yeah, yeah, we'll we'll go American Badass by Kid Rock. Yeah, there there we go. Um so for for me it's kind of one And of it, it it'll be it'll be the worst version ever cuz I cannot sing mm-hmm. at all. It, it, I I feel sorry for anybody who listened to it, but then again, that's the their the, their fault by picking me. So for me, it's almost like one of these where it's like I'm almost kind of embarrassed to say this or something, but since, like Taylor, since Taylor Swift's songs are almost <laughs> so catchy, I think I'd go up there and I would just totally embarrass myself and sing something like Blank Space just because it's kind of catchy. I know what if you had the background music, you could grow with that. So I'd probably get up there and be singing a little, a little, a little Taylor Swift. Oh. <laughs> okay. There you go. I, that, that is not surprising knowing mm-hmm. you. You're definitely a Taylor Swift singer in the shower. I, I just have a hunch, but that's it. That was a that that is your week your week one preview, NFL preview, season preview, week two in college football preview. So thank you guys for listening. We'll talk to you on Tuesday. <laughs>